So I call yeah. honey, pager, she calls back. She talks to my parents and she, and she picks me up, brother. She yeah. takes me to that class and it was history from there. But that's where I said the key was cleave. Why? On the way back when she drops me off, I go downstairs and I'm walking around and I see this cat. You know how Cleve used to dress. Mm -hmm. He had the, yeah. like the North face. He had like all these cool colors and you could tell he smelled like a B-boy for some yeah, reason. He, he had, I don't, he used to always have incense. incense yes. In <laughs> so he had, he had incense and this, I remember Cleve dressing. The reason why, um, that, that uh, we chose burgundy is because he looks so fresh in it. Like when we used to roll to, to places. And so we all went and got, we luckily found burgundy Pumas with the black stripe because they were mad hard to find. Yeah, um, back they then. were. And uh, Cleve always had like an, like fresh outfit, but he dressed down. When, like I, I might've sent the picture to you, like, um, you know, um, when we were all wearing the same thing. But, you know, he, he was like, Either had like Adidas or Pumas, you know, mostly Pumas. I which, remember. Which picture is that one? Because I know you sent me a several of them. Is it? Is that the one when? Is it kind of like a black and white picture, or is this? It's, or is? Or is that the one that that um? There's so many different ones. I believe it's the black and white. Is it this one right here? Tell me if it's this one. Yes, that was at the Zulu anniversary. If the I'm one that I met you? Yes. Holy Because like my crap. homeboy right there is wearing blue pants on the sitting down. I remember the guy in the top right. He was standing with you. Because I remember Warren. the beads. He's Who's that? A, Warren. So uh, oh, I never one, I never met like him, this. but I I know I saw him there. So the guy doing this is Warren. The show stops in ten, nine, eight. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Flash Talks History Worth Listening To. I go by the name of Flashback, and this evening we have an amazing guest that I've been dying to interview, usually like everyone else, but this brother right here, we go way, way, way back. He goes by the name of B-Boy Smirk, and he's a hip-hop artist from the Bronx, New York, of Puerto Rican descent who found the positive outlets of music, art, and dance through hip-hop. His history parallels that of hip-hop culture almost as if they were one at the same time. He started experimenting with turntables, created a tag for himself, and began to explode on the brakes as a b-boy. Smirk grew up in a military family and moved around a bit during grade school, but eventually settled back in the Bronx, New York, in the late 80s. He began to get noticed by older cats, the pioneers, and began practicing with his homies in the parks and on the street corners. And then he started DJing with his cousins by the time he was 12 years old. And after being exposed to the world of graffiti, Smirk began expanding his lettering styles to doing full pieces. He was put down with the Rocksteady crew after battling Crazy Legs in a Zulu Park jam in 1994. He formed his own crew with the adopted name as Ready to Rock, a.k.a. RTR, which he is very <laughs> proud of and reps to this day. Smirk served in the military for five years and returned to New York and quick, quickly got back to his passions in the hip-hop expressions of dance, music, art, now living in Reno, B-Boy Smirk strives to find balance with a prof profession of nine to five job while still helping the smaller hip hop communities grow and experience the full spectrum of its arts and music. Smirk has been blessed to travel the world 
doing what he loves and represents an inspirational style. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for B-Boy Smurf! been too long <laughs> oh crazy. yeah man well welcome to flash talks history worth listening to this is the first thing i want to do for first of all i would like to thank you for taking the time and spending a little time with me and have a conversation about the history your history my history but the first thing i like to do in this show is i want you to look around the screen and tell me what you see my brother on the back of your screen or well, the whole screen that you see is the little, the little thing you see right now. Uh, I see flash talks history. Mm -hmm. What else? On the, and then I see uh, in your studio. I can't really see, make out the uh, what's on the posters. On the yeah. on the corners, in the corners of, of, of the screen, exactly. Like you see the little dots. You got the DJ. You, you see that? Oh, I, I, know see, it's kinda... I see the the graph, the DJ. It looks like the B boys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then like the the dude with the with the radio. With the, uh, the boom MC, box. yeah, because uh, the little live thing is covering them. So I know, I know, you... I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. So now they say that hip hop has a fifth element. Do you know what that is? Hmm. I have. I to... know you know, brother. Yeah, I know I mean, you know. Uh, the the person, I guess you know. Yeah, the knowledge, us. Yeah, the history. Yeah, yeah. You know your history, <laughs> my history, the 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 philosophy of each element. And which makes it five elements, but thank you it's for being like, part of the show. It's almost like the third eye, you know what I'm saying? Like when, there when you go, that. there you go. So you know exactly what I'm talking about. But how how's it going for you, man? It's been ages, man. I'm telling you, man. it's crazy, <laughs> brother. Like especially especially with you, because like we go back like from mad, the beginning uh, like from the beginning almost then yeah 94 um, then, i met you i met you in 94 with honey rockwell when we went to the zulu nation anniversary at the armory which yeah yeah you yeah down. you had the burgundy you had the black pants and i'll show you some of that clips tonight yeah was that so. uh, and that, i had a question about that because i was like or because i i was was it 94 or was it 95 because i i remember um, the first anniversary I went to was like in, in Houston and like like somewhere near Houston that we went to. Me and like, I, I don't know if I if he took me there before I got down, but I know that Tribe Called Quest performed there. So is I'm that the sure. one that Black Sheep was there? Tribe Called Quest was there. There was oh, I, I could remind you. Battle Squad came with Emilio, Storm, yes. and Maurizio. Yes. Yeah, that was my so first that, Zulu anniversary. So yeah, that's yeah, actually yeah. 1994, November 12th. Okay, so that was like a, one of the days, be, you know, like, because I know that they had like separate, like. Um, yeah, they did. They did. And this one is the one that, if you could remember, Maurizio had a little beef with Battle Squad, that whole thing, when he kind of joined Rocksteady. And then halfway through the anniversary, he shows up and he's going after Storm and Emilio. Honey yeah, Rocco was dressed in red all the way down. Quickstep was there, Rockefeller, um, um, Speedy Legs from Miami, Troll, Styles, and of course you were there. Cyclone was there too. The battle I remember, the because uh, I remember that battle, but then the, the battle I remember on my first anniversary is um, Troll was battling against Rock Betty, and I had just like just started messing with them. And so I know that uh, Trap Called Quest was there, and like 
it was right off of Houston because I remember um, driving up that way. So uh, maybe it might have been 93 because um, I, w I used to roll with legs at some point, uh, you know, before I got down with um, – actually got down with rock steady so i don't know what was it you got down rock steady because i think you weren't rock steady when i met you i got down in 94 um the summer of 94 oh Before, so you were rock steady then you were rock yeah. steady yeah so I, you were. I uh yeah yeah i got down right before the the anniversary where it rained that was the 17th anniversary for rock steady Hmm. So we'll go over that, and I know it's going to all make sense by the end of the show, but yeah, we're going to yeah, start yeah. it off from the beginning. How were you introduced to the hip-hop culture? And I'm talking about the beginnings of, let, let's go back before you even heard rap, before you even saw graffiti. I want, I, want you to, I want you to start from the beginning of the beginnings. Like, talk to us about that. All right. Well, let me see. If I had to start it off, you know, I was born in the Bronx. So that right, right there you off go. the bat, you know what I mean? Like that You're born in like, the Mecca. Yeah, yeah, well, here you go. Boom. There, there goes your ticket right in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, anyway, for sure. Um, but, you know, I didn't stay that long uh, initially because when, when uh, I'm guessing that when, when I was born, my dad was, he was in the transition of um, the military from the army, and then he wanted to join the Marines. So he got out and then he came into the Marines. And I, I know that because, um, you know, rest in peace to my father. Um, he passed away, but I had his records, you know, his um, military records. And so, you know, I know how to look through them because I was in the military at one point. So anyway. So, thank you for your service, man. But yeah. um, well, around what age were you when you started digging to, to, through the crates of your dad? Like if you could remember. Um, well, he, my dad passed away about two or three years ago. So, um, when it came to looking at specific years, that was, you know, about two or three years ago, he, he passed away in 2019. But, um, going back to your question, uh, my dad had joined the military and, um, we immediately went to the first base, which was North Carolina. And then to around San Diego, we, we, uh, moved to San Diego at, at some point. So okay. I remember it might have, like looking at the years, it might have been 83, right? Um, and at that time, my my aunt, Eva Lisa, right? She used to um, live in the Bronx and she wound up coming over to, to San Diego. Um, I don't know if she was just trying to get away, but, um, or visiting. But she was there for a minute for like at least a couple of months. And so when she would come down, she was fresh. Like she would always talk about like, oh, like this, this is how you wear your Pumas. And this is how you wear, cause like at that time, my mom was like, let me call me here all nice, you know? Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. And like, I want you to wear like a, a little tie, you know, that's cute. Very conservative, very conservative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, my mom was from, from Puerto Rico but she lived in the Bronx too. That's where my parents okay. met. But anyway, um, you know, they're, they're a little bit older. And so they were trying to make me, you know, look more presentable, but like my aunt, you know, she was younger and she used to be like, these are pooms. Oh, like you, your parents don't know no style. Hold on. Let me, this is how you feather your hair. I remember her being <laughs> like, you remember in the eighties, this is how you feather yeah, your hair. Yeah, definitely, blah, blah. definitely. And she used to talk about the music at the, you know, I was kind of young. I was 83, you figure I was probably about four or five, you know, because mm -hmm. I was born, I was born in 78. So, okay. um, so when I was about that age and it was in San Diego, cause we were, my dad was stationed there. But, you know, um, I remember us moving now that wasn't my exposure to, you know, breaking it was kind of my exposure to like the style, like, you know, wearing the fashion, you know, the, fashion. the fashion and like, you know, just that energy, whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. But my dad was like, Hey, we're going to Cuba. And he was like, I hope you guys know how to speak Spanish because we're, <laughs> we're getting, we're getting stationed there. And I was like, all right, cool. But I thought it was going to be like, like something else because when you think, 
when you're English speaking, as they say, oh, you're going to have to speak Spanish. And you're like, oh, like, yeah, it'll be a culture gonna... shock. Yeah. I was like, what's going on, especially at that age. And so we wound up moving to Cuba and it wasn't, you know, we were on base, you know, and um, my brother used to roll with some dudes. They used to break because breaking, we moved there in 84. And okay. so um, at that time, like breaking was like, it yeah, was, that's a peak. I guess, yeah, I'm I'm guessing that it was like, you know, happening everywhere. And so, um, you know, music was, uh, I remember one of my favorite jams back then was um, like, as far as music was, um, I think it's called Rocket. But of course, uh, Herbie Hancock. Herbie yeah, Hancock. Herbie Hancock. So um, listening to him, that stood out to me because like I used, to, sometimes it used to be on a, on the TV and like, it was crazy because we didn't have that many channels over there. I think it was like two or three channels. Mm -hmm. So when we when we heard people coming out with the boom boxes, it was like, oh, yeah. And so I used to always try to roll with my brother. And uh, my brother was always trying to get rid of me because I was the younger one. I was probably about four years younger. How old is and, he? Um, he's probably coming up on 49. Oh, okay. So he is a few years older than you then. Yeah, yeah. He was, he was a couple of years. I'm I'm coming up on 45. So I'm guessing he's coming up on 40. Or he's a year 49. One of the two. Anyway, um, uh, I used to try to roll with him. And I remember him being like trying to get away because he didn't want to babysit. And these one dudes were like, yo, why don't you roll with us? And the funny thing is that they put me in this little competition because they used to see, I used to, be able to do like little head spins, you know. Oh, so um, you were already like doing things? Well, the thing about it is, is that when I was, when it was natural for me to do like head spins back then, because I was a young little kid. And I remember specifically the reason why I was good at that is because I used to fall asleep on the couch upside down in the corner. And my mom <laughs> always had to take me and put me on, on my butt. You know, or lay, lay me down like when we, you know, that's so watching, interesting. If we were watching TV and then I used to go into the corner, I used to be like, boom, and I used to like, and so I remember doing continuous head spins and like I kind of like, um, the beginnings of, of uh, windmill, you know, like how kids do it, like, yes, little yes. windmills, you know, it's not mm -hmm. anything real, but um, and so it, anything footwork wise, like, you know, it wasn't gonna be like legit footwork you know mm -hmm. or top rock but you know like i try to emulate what was going on at the time and so um you know i wouldn't say i was a skilled b-boy at that time i wasn't exposed to graffiti because we were on a base and um very limited exposure to to um um djing right and so uh the first thing was definitely the style you know my my aunt introduced me to that eva lisa mm -hmm. and then it was my brother was introducing me more into the the dancing and so i used to always try to hang with him but you know and you're exposed to that so you seeing that everywhere you see in the fashion you're hearing the music the people you know rocking the boom box walking around your brother's yeah. probably got a swag he got some type of like hip-hop swag and you're yeah. seeing that you want to be down with the you know with the older brother so like me i'm the middle child but i have a sister but i remember some of her friends i wanted to be with them because they're older so they were like the the, the cool kids so yeah. <laughs> I, I know exactly what you're talking about now. Now you're watching all this. And when was it that it started like kind of like making sense to you that things started because you're living in Cuba and you there, how long were you there for? And if you could remember, like, is that like, like you said, 1984, right? So how long were you there for? Um, I'm guessing about two years because um, I remember having the pictures, like the classroom pictures, 84 and then the other ones mm -hmm. for 85. And then like, um, the next thing that I saw on my dad's records was like, cause it's weird because I, it'd be like stationed from here to here. You know what I mean? So I think it was like 86 or 87 that my dad was stationed in North Carolina. And there was a time in between that time that we went to Puerto Rico to go live with my grandmother. Cause 
as a as a marine, especially with my dad, he was he was counterintelligence, which was, you okay. know, yes, you know, they they call that secret squirrel shit. You know what I mean? That's yes, yes. So, um, you know, I don't. And we're both from military families, so we know what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So, um, he, you know how that goes. That like you're, you're stationed six yep. months out, and then you're back on base for six yep. months. So, um, there was times that um, uh, they'd be stationed. Um, he'd be state. I mean, not stationed. He'd be deployed, and so he'd be okay. like, oh. You know, you stay with the, you know, with my mother, or the, or you could stay with your mother. So sometimes we'd be in New York, sometimes we'd be in Puerto Rico. So yeah, so you're saying that um, your dad got deployed. He, um, he did a couple of tours back then, or or, or that was like one of the first tours. Um, with my 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 dad's job, it was uh, in the military. It was pretty much like a standard, like six months at home, six months out, right? However. Um, when when stuff went down, sometimes he would go to work and wouldn't come back for months because um, that's what was required of him. So yes, you know. definitely. So now you're in Puerto Rico. You say you're in Puerto Rico out there, and your dad deploys. Yeah. Did you make the decision of staying, or they were making the decision for you? You stay with your mom or your grandmother or your aunt, like? Well, they were making the decision because I, I was with my grandmother and I was with my mother, right? And so, um, with my sister and my brother, so we all just chilling there. And okay. so, you know, my dad would go do his thing and then come back. And then the next place we were going to, he was probably even setting up the, the home in North Carolina, like, cause they had to move everything, like all, you know, all the trucks and everything. So, mm -hmm. um, we went, you know, we went to North Carolina and at that time there was like a pause in, well, I don't want to say pause it in the hip hop scene, but people were into other things. And so it was a limited exposure to to the hip hop. Like back when, when, when we went over there, it was more like Run DMC era. Okay, okay. So it went a little bit commercial. It wasn't as as as, as big when you were in, in the States and then you went to Cuba and then you saw it's like big and then you go to Puerto Rico. Now you see a little bit less. Yeah, well, when I went to Puerto Rico, like we were just in our house experiencing the island. Forget about, you know, hip hop at that point, but it was a short oh, time. Oh, that's when the like salsa a, comes in and all that good stuff. Yeah, because we, <laughs> we did that. My, actually, my, my, um, my grandfather, my step grandfather, right? Um, he used to DJ uh, parties with my, with my grandmother. So they oh, would wow. host like parties in in the house, and he was a DJ. So they'd have people coming over. So like I'd be peeking out, like checking out, like everybody dancing, like doo -doo. and I remember specifically, like, um, you remember that song, "Mami el Niño Está Llorando." Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. With like, Fredo Vargas. Like, so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I remember that, uh, you know, merengue, salsa. Yeah. Like, so um, in the background, and like they have mad people, and then. They be playing congas, like, you know, um, throwing You had down, the like, island vibe. The yeah, island yeah, yeah. vibe happening. So, you know, like the parents, they be like, ah, con, con eso títere, cosa de títere yes. with the hip hop, yep. you know what I mean? Yep, yep, so, yep. Um, it wasn't necessarily hip hop on that side, but when I went to North Carolina, because we were in Puerto Rico for a limited time, I met my grandmother on my father's side, and we went over to... Um, Actually, we met, I met my grandmother like earlier, like in San Diego, because she had a spot over there. But by the time we moved, you know, she had she had a spot in in Puerto Rico too. So um, there's that, you know. Port Cuba was kind of like the in between, you know. And then we moved to North Carolina. Okay, now now you're in North Carolina. What year is this? And were you already exposed fully to everything from rap? And you saw your 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 family DJing and doing parties, so you already had the party vibe. And that, and it's interesting because I could kind of tell that that's how you created this this rhythm and the way you dance. You have that. You can see the Latin background and you can see the party vibe because you, know <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Like you know, say like the way you break, it's like you could tell you're having fun. Like like. You know what I'm saying? Like you're showing, you're moving your shoulders, you're doing certain things. 
Yeah. Wow, okay. Okay. I see that. That's so now, when you're in North Carolina, what happened? Um, did it was it around you still hip hop or 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 it was kind of like in and out? It was it was an in and out a little, little bit more of the commercial stuff because I remember, um, I think I was in third grade and everybody was in like you gotta fight for well, your right to fight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I definitely remember that I was like yeah, and all the kids were like yeah, this is the joint, and so I was like yeah, yeah, you know, and then like I and prior to that you know it was Run DM you know Run DMC and. Uh, My Adidas, I remember, uh, all that stuff, and yeah, I remember like uh, the um, the song that I that stands out to me because my brother used, used to be like, "Yo, you know," uh, was "You Be Illin." Oh yes, that's a dope one. Yeah, yeah. Um, that I think that might have been a little bit later. You know, so I I'm, used to not... love a uh, uh, King of Rock. I used to love that track. Yeah, you yeah, remember yeah, yeah. I'm a King of Rock. Yeah. Yeah, how that came yeah. in, I was like. Like I just wanted to go like this. <laughs> yeah, ding, ding, ding. like what? Yeah, that was so dope. I I remember hearing that. So yeah, so carry on. So yeah. you're in North Carolina. And you you're listening to the Beastie Boys. I'm gonna assume the Run DMC were Aerosmith and um, yeah. all the Dana, all those. Dana yeah, Dane. Um, yes. I don't know if you remember him. Like, um, of uh, course. How did that song go? Uh. He had, he had a couple of songs, Dana Dame, but I'm just trying to like remember a specific one. Like, um, it's the it's the son of Dana Dame. Yes. Like, um, you got the rhythm, then, you got it. That's it. Yeah, and then uh, Tone Loke, uh, oh, that was a thing yes. back then. Um, Plus the move. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, who else? Uh, I know you were listening to um freaking um. Of course, the Slick the Rick, Jets. Mona Lisa, and yeah, yeah. And well, not so much that because not. At, oh, you're in North the, Carolina, yeah. so it's a North little Carolina. different. Yeah. So yeah, yeah so yeah. like that was kind of sprinkled in because, um, remember I was telling you that my dad would do six months here, six months there. So That's when those correct. six six months were, um, when we'd spend time in New York too, because my grandmother had a big apartment and she had, if if you look at my family, I have uh eight aunts and uncles between all of them and then there's my wow. mother which makes it nine so okay. so at one point she would have close to all of them there you know chilling in the apartment and so um and it was a big apartment it's not like we were like you know little you know you know mm -hmm. and so um i remember my aunt she lived in brooklyn and like uh and then my other aunt lived in in the other the the bronx spot which my grandmother lived at and I was listening to more of that stuff when I went to New York because there was a very strong contrast. So there, like I said, it was sprinkled in like Mona Lisa mm -hmm. and like more of like the, the New York vibe, like hard. Oh, uh, like, okay. So the Run DMC and all that was like the commercial, like, and so I remember talking with my friends um, back then, there was some that were into like the rap right but there was some that were um more of like metallica you know what i mean like, ah, uh, and right. they like I, I was into the rock world too so yeah so they used <laughs> to be like yo f that rap stuff you know i used to be like what and so there was a distinct delineation back then i used to be like nah f that you know uh you know heavy metal, metal. stuff and, yeah all the heavy metal and the rock we, we were friends so we wound up kind of like melting our own pot you know what i mean as far as that but like there was the mtv era and michael jackson michael jackson was introduced to me when i was in cuba like prince you know um okay. michael jackson you know because purple rain was out back then um mm -hmm. i remember because one of our babysitters she was a girl and like we were we were staying at her house and her brother was like yo turn that purple rain stuff off <laughs> and uh and she they wound up fighting in front of, of us like he wanted to watch oh, something else and we were like what <laughs> you know what i mean and then so um she eventually got to watch her purple and you know how girls are always right <laughs> mm -hmm. yep they're gonna win at the end anyways <laughs> yeah but eventually we 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 moved from north carolina to uh back to new york and that was either around 89 90 right around there. okay okay so um so we're entering yeah. 
the golden era of hip hop. Oh yeah. Melting in because if you say late 80s, I know you were listening to your freestyle if you're in New York. Yeah, I know you're listening to a little bit of the disco because it was still playing. And I know you were listening to the Jungle Boys, our house, you and all the house music. Yes, Land sir. House, Wepa Man and all that. Right. The first the first person who got me who, because like we used to go to like uh, family parties all the time, like back then. And um, the, the person who was like the star back then, as far as I'm, this is where, where the DJ get, comes in. You know what I mean? Um, was my cousin Louie, right? Um, okay. And he used to go by the, the name of Sight. He used to tag, you know what I mean? And so we used to go to Brooklyn. And uh, sometimes he used to come to the Bronx to like DJ stuff, but... Um, okay. And know, he's older than you. He's, he's, he's a little bit older than my brother. They were around the same age, but just a tad uh, older. But and you're so still we, young and you're going to Brooklyn or he's taking you? Oh, well, we our family used to go over there all the time because he used to live over there, so ah, we used to go visit our Okay, aunt. okay. And so, um, uh, I went and met up with Louie, and he was hanging out with his homeboy Freddie. Which I'm guessing that Freddie got him into DJing a little bit. I, I'm not sure who came first, but Freddie was doing with all the dope equipment, and he like he brought me over to his house. He had records wall to wall, and like you know, and that was the first time I, I I set my hands on DJ equipment. You know what I mean? Because uh, Freddie was like, "Yo, you wanna you wanna get up on there?" And I was like, "What? You gonna let me touch like your equipment?" And I remember he had a little like it looked like a a lollipop headphone. You know what I mean? <laughs> that you held and oh, you put it on the side. Way. Are you ready for this? Yeah, yeah. You're gonna trip out because I actually ended up. I've always loved those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom. Yes, yes. And what are these, like a, right? <laughs> a little lollipop headphones. keep headphone. that there. And Sometimes they use that... it as a mic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So he he let me use his lollipop thing. He was like, all right. And it was, he, he uh, you know. That's so funny how you mom. describe it, the lollipop. Yeah. That's so like, funny. Whoop. It's like a big lollipop you watch. <laughs> so yeah. carry on, carry on. So he he let me put that that on, you know, and and you know, basically like started showing me. I was a little confusing at first because I was like music and then listening, and then he was like, "Yo, you gotta tap with your foot," you know. He was like, "You gotta le learn how to like separate the music," and so I had like a five minute crash, you know, crash course on DJing. So that was my first intro to DJing. But like the music, I was around all the time, you know. Like my my cousin would come down and DJ like my sister's sweet 16 and like mm -hmm. but you know back then it was like you know coro tka correct you know, la and, india um, yeah lizette melendez you know um tka yeah 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 tka and uh, i remember like the the records that he used to play he used to say tommy boy Do, oh you know? yes that was like, that was had, just, yes so dope was, and there's a dude doing like a suicide i think like in the air right I was like three silhouettes, boop, boop. And so that was a distinct memory for me. Like, oh, yeah. And so um, my and my brother, he had his collection of records. Like, my brother, he's a little bit older, so he, he'd allow me into his room sometimes. And then I used to look through his records and, like, run DMC and, like, all the stuff that was in there, you know. So um, he had, like, his freestyle records, and uh, and it was sprinkled in with House, too. Cause, uh, nice. You had that song like "Girl Our House" too. Yes, Girl, of our course. House too. Yes, yes. And then uh, all the Latin house. It was. It wasn't. I didn't really hear too much of the uh, the um, what I would call. I would describe it as like the Manhattan style, like you know, uh, village style house, like yeah, yeah. Doom, 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 doom. Yes. Now, were you into the Wepa Man? Uh, Wepa. Que bonita bandera, que bonita yeah. bandera, like all I, those songs. That came, I, am, am I, from what I heard, that came like a little bit later. Um, yeah, 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 you're right, in yeah, the yeah. 90s, that, that, did, yeah, that yeah. did come. So you're talking about Todd Terry days, if you can remember that. Todd Terry was a big time producer, and, and he would play all the bango, 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 remember that song? 
Bango is called. It's super dope song. As soon as you hear, you're gonna be like, "Oh, I remember yeah, that." Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's that same era of "I'll House You" and yeah, yeah, um, yeah. French Kiss, the one that you remember, French Kiss that that you start hearing a girl moaning. It goes slower. Oh and yes, slower. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, um, back then it was uh, also um, uh, she wakes up early in the morning just yes. to do it. You yep. know, like dirty talk, uh, crystal waters. Yeah, all that. Um, all those. Yes. Go yeah. ahead. And then I remember that that beat that goes. Mm -hmm. Um, all those beats. You know, like they they, they were Latin sounding, and so. My first introduction back to, back into uh, when I was in New York was more of that versus rap, you know what I mean? And it wasn't until um, I, I went back to school and was hearing, uh, you know, like more of like the EPMD-ish, you know, um, more okay, of the- Now the West Coast rocking. is coming in, Public enemies coming in, all those type of music, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, that even that was a little bit, you know, like um, because I, I was listening to like more like Eric B, you know, and mm -hmm. all that stuff, you know, and and then as as the years progressed, you know, yeah, you know, they Public Enemy. And I'm, I remember that was almost around the time that they had like the riots. Do you remember the riots? Of course, I do. In that LA, was crazy. Yeah, the, they, the LA riots with yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Um, that's when um, what's that guy's name? Um, that he got abused by the cops and then it went crazy. Rod Rodney King. Rodney King. There you go. There you go. My yeah. bad. I just couldn't remember yeah, that. No. But <laughs> not because, like you know, where you have so much stuff, you have to recall. Like even like when I'm talking about people that I I remember like chilling with, I, I'd be like, oh, what's his name? I'm having a brain fart. But yeah, um, Rodney King time like. And then it happened in New York too, because yeah, for exactly. some reason, That's what I was getting at. yeah, a lot of people don't know that. But whoever lived in New York in that time, when that shit was happening, I was watching it on TV. Yeah, out of nowhere, I'm in the Heights, Washington Heights, but I was born in Harlem. Yeah. But I used to hear about the BX, and my cousins live on Bailey Avenue, Burnside. I had people's in Westchester, Parkchester. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they were telling me that I was just no way a party but on. Like I hear yeah. people say, don't go over there. And then I'm like, I remember what? driving then, through Fordham. At Fordham, there's people throwing bricks everywhere. Like yo, the building's like, burning. A lot of people don't know about the buildings burning, man. Yeah, I I didn't see any um you know burning myself. You know what I mean? But I know that there was stuff going on. It was it was chaos. You know. Yeah. And you know that that the NYPD had their hands full, like for sure. It was and crazy. So that must have been a rough time, you know? Oh, yeah. man. This is before Giuliani started cleaning house. Oh, man. Yo, when Giuliani came through, like, it was a wrap. I remember. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, I think that he came, like, more in the late 90s or something like that. But um, I remember mm. going to the mil uh I remember going to the military, right, and coming back, and I was chilling on the corner. Like, I know that this is a little off subject, but um, I was like, yo, let's play some craps. And my boy was like, nah, you know, it's it's hot around here, dog. Like, I was like, no, nah, it's all good. Like, so I remember he was like, ah, yeah, yeah, we got some dice. And the first roll that he rolled, whoop, I was like, oh, snap. Everyone so on the wall. They had, they had us all like this. And uh, they, what was this? They, uh, um, sir, um, what was the thing? Um, stop and search or something like that? What was the thing that they were calling him? Um, I, I, you know, I, I know, I know what you're talking about, but I'm not. I'm not very clear. That was that, that law that they pulled in, and you could yeah. be walking with a book bag, and immediately you go into the wall. I don't care who it is. Uh, illegal search and seizure, basically, it was legal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which a lot of people don't know. But but let's go back. Let's go back to yeah. You going to school? You listening to EPMD? You listening yeah. to all these cats, and you're getting just flooded with rap. Now now that's coming in hard at you. Yeah, so I, you know, I remember like Cypress Hill. I could just kill a man. Oh All yeah, insane in the brain. Yes, insane in the membrane. And that's when I, that's when I kind of started like doing the DJ stuff because my brother saved up for some DJ equipment. He, like, they got him on on that uh, like, oh, like, oh, you got a deal. Like, take this mixer and two turntables. Deal. Here you go. Mm -hmm. But he wound up getting like the cheap turntables, the belt yeah. drive. So I had to learn yes, that yes. scratch on that yep. like. Doo -doo 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 -doo. 
do, you know? Mm-hmm. Or else it would skip. And then um did that and, one have and, a pullback? Did it have a pullback or no? No, it was just like you had to like put like paper underneath it to make it yes, slippery. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So, yes, yes, yes. And then we used to have to grab the record, not yes. even like a record sit like this. You have to grab the record from the side to get like yeah, a piece yeah, of to scratch. get that little grip. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because uh, if you if you did it the other way, boop, you know what I mean? Because the belt drives, they were like yeah. really. Wobbly, it wasn't meant know? for that. It's not meant for that. No, <laughs> no, not at all. And then it wasn't until my my cousin. Uh, well, I call him my cousin because if you take it back to North Carolina, right? My father was friends with um, you know the the Ayala's. Right, that was okay. a, his, his last name, and you know, the Ayala's my 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 friend. He used to mostly chew with my my um my brother, right? Yeah, so it's like and, family. You call those yeah. cousins because they, you know, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how that, especially Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, me yeah, primo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my cousin. <laughs> so he he uh we had known him even in San Diego because like they were like stationed together. So uh, my boy Phrase, which was Jimmy. Okay, mm-hmm. we knew him in, uh, you know, in California, and then we knew him in North Carolina, and then we caught up with him in New York, and then you know, un- under unfortunate events because my mother was walking through Fordham with us, and she ran into his mom because they were really close, so right. that's why we were like, at-, at some point we thought we were really cousins, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, I have a lot of cousins that are not really yeah. cousins, but they're my cousins. <laughs> yeah, so uh, uh, phrase Jimmy, right? He wound up uh, getting um, money because of you know I don't know what happened, but he wound up getting money of some sort, and he wound up buying getting real turntables. And ah, okay, okay. So we had caught up with them, and he got real turntables, and they, he didn't have any space to put it at, so he put it in our house. Right? Oh man! So... And so, by that time, you know, I was I started being like sneaking into my brother's room, you know what I mean? And then like just I I had that crash course in DJing, and they had you know we had a like by that time we had probably like almost a full crate of records because you know we didn't have that much money, and yes. um, we used to have to you know. But when it came to records, my my cousin. You know, he used to go and get all the records, like anything new. So when it came to music, like he got everything new because he, he was in a, a record pool. I think I think okay. he was in a record pool, either that or he was like buying a lot of records because he had the money. And so he would bring them to the house and, I, you know, I would sneak it to my, my brother's room. And it used to be him and my brother DJing. Right. But when they left. I would sneak in there and I would be DJing. <laughs> and they didn't know I was getting better than both of them. You know what I mean? I was oh, like scratching. snap. I was, yeah, I was, I was getting it. You know what I mean? How many hours like, you were doing in there? Dude, as soon as they left, I was there for the rest of the day. And then my mom used to be like, apaga esa miela. She used to be like, <laughs> and then I used to be like, no, you know. Turn like, that I used, off. To, I used to be like, get out, get out. You know, like I'm DJing in here. She's like, lo baja o lo paga. <laughs> oh like, man! I used to have to turn it down, but I, I would be doing in there, like pretty much four or five hours a day, you know, just getting it, boop, 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 you know. And so, especially since uh, back then, I had to um, DJ with the other turntables, and then I got these ch- these twelve hundreds where I could actually like doop, yes. do what I wanted. And yes. then there was some there was some cats on on my block, you know. Um, but the you know. When when he brought those over is when it was the summer right before high school for me, right? So I know I'm kind of skipping around, but mm-hmm. you know, um, back when I when we first moved to um, to the Bronx, we were like in the Fordham area, Fordham 180th mm-hmm. Street, Third Avenue. All the B12 right? is that the B12 yeah. bus? <sighs> I wasn't paying attention to the buses back then, but. Um, I know that that uh, we were. I went to junior high school, one eighteen. Oh, so when, okay. Is that near Valentine? Yeah, around that area. And so I remember when when there was a time we lived with my grandmother for like probably like a year, year and a half. You know, some 
and then we found another apartment because my my dad wound up finding in a you know some sort of like detective job or whatever, mm-hmm. and so um, we moved there, and then uh, we moved to Parkchester, and that's when he brought those turntables. You know what ah, I mean? Ah, okay, so, okay, okay. But when we're it getting came close, to, we we're getting close to the to the yeah, boom. Yeah, yeah, because um, that's when I that's when I met Wiggles. Because when oh, we moved snap. to Parkchester. But and tell us the I, story how you met him. Like, like I gotta hear this because now you're learning how to spin, scratch. You're involved with the music. You're basically you already know music. Yeah, I uh, mean, and I, you do a couple of little head spins. You kind of know what breaking is, but not really. Like that's yeah, how yeah, it yeah. was. I you didn't connect everything yet, right? No, I haven't really connected everything. Um, actually, I was doing things separately because when I was in junior high school is when I got like my tag. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, wasn't oh. dope. I wasn't dope at tagging or anything, but I got my tag. And I, I remember um, uh, my homeboy, uh, Chino, not the, not the Chino that you're thinking, but, you know, like. Well, there's a, there's the, a lot of, when it comes to Chinos. Puerto Ricans, it's a lot of yeah. Chinos, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because all you have to do is look like, you know, a little bit Asian. And then and so mm-hmm. um, my homeboy, Chino, I was chilling with him. And um, I remember uh, him being like, yo, I tag, blah, blah, blah. And, and so I remember thinking back then, like, I want, you know, something with an X in it. I, like, that shit is fresh. You know what I mean? And so the, the first thing I, like, and they were talking about, like, shooting. And, like, the first thing I wanted was, like, like something like a laser, like, zap. You know what I mean? Yes. So, like, X, mm-hmm. zap was my first tag. And he was like, yo, dog, can't do that. Because somebody <laughs> else already has that. And I oh, was like, well, so you already okay, okay. So he was I was like, damn. And so like I was like, show me. And he was like, in this book right here, homeboy got X zap. I was like, damn. And then like he wanted to call me smiley because everybody used to call me like they used to be like, yo, you always smiling, even though I was like serious. Like I would be um like just sitting there like doing my work and they used to be like, it looks like you smiling all the time. Like <laughs> so they wanted to call me Smiley. And so there was another kid that I knew who was called Smiley. So I was like, nah, nah. It, was, it, it was a popular name too. Mm-hmm. And so um, I went with Smirk, you know? And so- Oh, so uh, you just like, came up with Smirk out of nowhere? My, my homeboy Chino did. And like the girls, it was kind of like a collective thing because the girls were like, like, what are we going to call you? Because you're always smiling. And I was like, well, it can't be smiling. It was like, oh, like, how about Smirk, you know? Yeah, you got and that so, Smirk. So we went with Smirk, right? And then um, uh, the funny thing is there was somebody called Smirk in the school. I, I didn't know oh, about it. I actually wow. knew the dude. I knew the dude who was Smirk, right? And my name was Smirk. And so we didn't know that, you know, that we were Smirk. We both graduated. And later on, somebody was like, yo, there's another Smirk over there. And I was like, who's the Smirk? And then I was like, yo, I know this fool. Like we used to like, you know what I'm saying? I, I wanna say we rolled together all the time, but we we said what's up in the hallways, mm-hmm. what's up, dog? Like, and so I was like, ah, oh, dog, like, and I know that he wasn't biting off of me, and he knows that I wasn't biting off of him. Uh, he and was he tagging? Was, yeah, yeah, he was tagging. It was his okay. was S M I think U R K, and then mine was S M E R K. I remember specifically saying I want to do mine with the E. Because if anybody else had smirk, I, I wanted that E in there. So um, my homeboys used to tease me and be like, smirk, smirk. You know what I mean? <laughs> I used to be like, whatever, y'all. But, um, you know, I, I was tagging and I wasn't I wasn't any good. My my brother used to tag, you know, try, try attempt tagging. He, he actually got into uh, doing graph before I did because he met Wiggles before I did. And so phrase um they used to all we used to all roll together and we used to like you know um they used to bring the black books and they used to have all these stories and i met zulu gremlin i met zulu gremlin before i met wiggles why how you ran into him because um back then uh, i i know that they used to chill with wigs you know like wigs i used to just keep hearing wigs wigs name like oh so you always here because you know Producer, uh, b boy, popper, graffiti writer. Everything. You would always, you would always. You, I started hearing them talk about like because my brother started getting involved with the Zulu Nation back then, and so um, I remember he 
he'd come back. Do you remember Scully's? Like of uh, we used to call them Scully's. Scully's. And yeah. The, Till this day, I call it Scully's. <laughs> Well, no, 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 but it wasn't just like a little beanie. But no, 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 like the, 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 the original Scully's, yeah. And then it used to be, it used to look like it was tied up and then, yep, you know, yep, on top. Yep, yep. So, like, he used to come back, with, I used to be like, yo, what's that? Like, can you get me one? And he used to be like, yo, you know, like, he used to always be like, because, mm -hmm. you know, we were cool with each other, but, you like, know. Like, don't be like me. <laughs> no, 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 we were cool with each other, but, like, he, he was always on that, like, I don't want to babysit, you know, like, I'm trying to. Like you're trying to meet girls, you know what I mean? And like I don't I ah, like, yo, I won't yeah. so I learned to act mature early, you know what I mean? Cause I, I had to be like if I was around with my brother, I used to be like, he ain't gonna wanna take me. And then Phrase was like, yo, you know, brother knows how to act, like let him come through. So he he was cool with me. Um so I, I used to roll with my brother a lot and you know, I got involved more through that so i met zulu gremlin in passing you know and i remember zulu gremlin had these beads and he had like this spray can on the mm -hmm. end of his beads you know what i mean and he yeah, was always, yeah. like, dressed i remember having like this aqua hat you know what i mean you know like turned to the side he was like real fresh like with it you know and he was chilling a lot in new york back then and um i i met wiggles because uh, at that time we were like, yo, we're stopping by Wiggles' house. And he was like, yo, when we go in Wiggles' house, like, I need you to shut the fuck up. <laughs> or like, sorry. Sorry. Like, for, don't like, say cursing. anything. All no, right, it's all yeah. good, bro. This is like, this is hip hop. This is raw, brother. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, kids be watching, you know. And yeah. so he was like, I, I need you to, sh you know, I, I need you to shut the F up. You know what I mean? And uh, I was like, all right, all right, cool. So, like, I went in there real quiet and then like just kind of like standing next to my brother. And then uh, Wiggs was like, yo, what's up? Who's this? And I was like, what's up, Smirk? You know, and he was just like, oh, you tag? He was like, yo, you didn't tell me your brother tag. Like, hold on one second. He went, Shh. here you go. Black like, book. check check these black books out. And uh, I think I remember um, the first time I was there, I think I remember Odessa being there. I'm not sure. From Jam but, on the Groove, Odessa, right? Yeah, because like, you know, he used to always have people's in his house and they, they would be like doing graph. Like somebody would be in the corner doing graph, mm -hmm. maybe talk about music. And I yep. think he had his own turntables. So, um, but that was Fraser's real uncle. So ah. through, through property, right? Wiggles mm -hmm. became my uncle. <laughs> you know what wow. I mean? Then from there on, it was just like, I started seeing Wiggles a lot more like, oh, and then like, mm -hmm. Um, so we were chilling and, and I got involved through Zulu Nation and, um, we started going to like these meetings, like, um, my brother would take me, took me to a meeting one time. And from there on, I was like, I knew how to get around. I knew how to take the bus, especially since I was still going to junior high school. Right. And cause when we moved to Park Chester, I was still going to junior high school. So I would mm -hmm. take the BX 36 and, it'd yep. be like, whoop, and it'd go all the way down to 180th. Right now, and were you I, baptized already as a, as a Zulu yet or not yet? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, so I started, I, um, I was like, I know how to like, you know, take the bus, you know, and I knew that Wiggles was going to be there. So I would just show up and be like, kind of stroll in and he'd be like, Hey, what's up? You know what I mean? Like, and so <laughs> Wiggles used to be like, Oh, what's up dog? Like, yo, take a seat over there or whatever, you know? How and old so, were you at that time? Let me see. If, if and I the year put, that will be make make so much sense in the year too. I think it was like ninety. It was like ninety one or ninety. No, oh. like ninety one ish. Ninety one ish because nine. I I have my thing. Um, uh, when I went to high school, it said ninety two, ninety three. You know how they used to put both years. Mm -hmm. You start ninety two and and finish that year ninety three. So that was my Correct. first year of, of high school. So I was a this was preceding that because I was what in high, school high school. What high school you went to? Um, I started off in Stevenson because I oh, went to Stevenson. Like, yeah, I, I I went to a couple of high schools. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I was a troublemaker. Like, let me tell okay. you. Okay. I went to Stevenson, Columbus. I got kicked out of Columbus. They 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 sent me to some junior high school. I think it was PS ninety eight, where like they had the troublemakers. 
on the fourth oh, floor. Oh, in the third floor or the second or whatever floor? Like the fourth floor, yeah. Yes, I went, yes. I went there for a minute and then like they 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 were deciding what they were gonna do with me and then they they put me in Lehman High School. And I could tell you the whole story. Oh, how that, shit. How that Lehman is. High School, brother. Damn. Yeah, I could I could try I could I could tell you like all the stuff that transpired to go through that route, but eventually when I when I got to Lehman um remind me like because that's when hey, I, I will I will I, I will I started like focusing on finishing school because I, I was a super duper senior all right so um I graduated school in 99 <laughs> no way so meaning all these years that I've known you you were still going to high school yeah because dude I, I never my, what the hell I don't even my I, I can't even think of that like my first two wow. years, my first two years of high school, like, like my dad showed up to high school, right? And because uh, he intercepted, because I used to intercept the letters. <laughs> you know I mean? And so he, he Before. got one, like one slipped by me. And he was like, oh, oh we're man. We're going to your school to go uh, check out what's happening. He had no idea. And so, um, and you know, my, my parents were, were separated at that time, right? But, um, but they were, he would, still pay my mother's rent and he'd come okay through, you know mm -hmm. but they were just separated and so um he was like oh we're going to your school i'm going to go to your school and my mom was like ah mira este está, está andariando por ahí, you know yeah so, yeah like you're hanging out and like just hanging out doing whatever you want to do yeah so we we went to the school and i remember my dad being like hey i'm you know she's like oh who, who you here to you know who you hear about and he's like, I'm here about my son. You know, I got the letter. He's like, okay, uh, who's your son? All right, Mark. That's my government name. <laughs> Mark. Mark who? Mark. Yes, you know, he's like, uh, I don't, I don't know your son. Oh, here he goes. Like, oh yeah, he hasn't been here since the beginning of school. And this is like, <laughs> this is like December. Oh, so, sad. so this is like the 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 first semester, but the ending going into winter. Yeah, yeah. And this is my second year of high school when she said she's saying this. Oh, snap. I used to go to school, right? I used to I used to have a first period uh, art class, and I used to definitely go to that because that was my jam. And then I used to go to homeroom, and then peace, right? <laughs> and so that wasn't a good thing, you know what I mean? But oh, you know, of course so, not. But uh, you know, and for those kids people, that are listening, do not imitate do that. Do not because, do that. No, because it's the best thing to finish early. You have so much freedom after that. Yes, yes, and then that, that, that's a that's a strong message. And so, the reason why I say we'll come back to that is because Legs found out. Because by that by this time, when Legs found out, I was already you know in rock steady, and he was like, "Yo, you can't come around if you're gonna be fucking up." Or you can't come oh. around if you're gonna be, you can't come around if you're gonna be effing up, and so um, he would ask my parents like, "How's he doing in school?" Every time, and so if I didn't get a good report, you know what I mean? He was like, "Nah, I'm gonna." He says, "Yo, you know, we had too many dudes in rock study before who were, you know, uneducated, and we need yeah. you to be, you know, take us into the somebody do here. something yeah. in your life, right?" Now, yeah, now, so. now, we got to go back. We got to go back when, before, like, you remember you mentioned when Mr. Wiggles, you would show up to his crib randomly. Yeah. You no, no, no. know about it. The Zulu, the Zulu, well, I used to show up to the Zulu meetings randomly, and then I would go there with either Phrase or uh, Madcap, which which was my brother. They used to call him Madcap. Okay. And uh, uh, I would go there because my brother used to be popping. Boom. Boom. And so, oh, okay. so, so he was a uh, popper back then. And so if I'm not mistaken, I think he was down with rock steady. He preceded me, but he was getting his stuff together. And, you know, he wound up being trying to get into real estate. So that's okay. why he kind of like, you know, so. So you were going to the Zulu classes, which one you were attending? Cause I remember, um, I got baptized on the yo, um, on the um, lucky strike. Rest in peace. And this is ninety four. And I remember it was November Lucky 17th. Strike. Lucky Strike was he he was down with chapter two, right? Yeah, chapter two. Chapter two, because I used to like I used to go over there all the way to Fordham, like deep Fordham. Yeah. Do you ever go to brothers. his house? 
Um, not Lucky Strikes. Uh, it was uh, oh, I wish I could remember his name, but he um, there was a brother that lived over there. Um, and I think Forrest used to hang with them. Used to know him. Is so it I by university? To, like, Close you, by university. Yes, it was in the building in university. Yes. Um, I'm trying to oh, remember man. his name. I know who you're talking we, about. Oh, look how look how we God. stuck on the I same know. thing. You got to remember, we're in 2023 for those listening. This, we're talking Hold about on. early 1990s. You know what I'm saying? Hold on one second. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, yeah. Who was it? Oh, snap. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me. I, I have it here. Boom. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> look at that. And you know what's so crazy, brother? You see yeah. that it says number four three four. Yep. <laughs> you're not gonna you're not gonna believe me if I tell you what number I am. Nah, what is it? Four five four. Shut up. Ten, ten people after you. Wow, that's crazy. and I never forget it because one time some Zulus checked me years ago. I was in the train and he's like, "Was your ID?" And I'm like nervous, like trembling. He's like, "What chapter? <laughs> what chapter are you from?" And I'm like, four, five, four. And he's yeah. looking at me like, "What? This yeah. guy's crazy." And I, I took it out, and, and I'm nervous. And yeah. then he looks at it. And he's like, "You ain't chapter four, five, four, man. That's your ID number." And I said, yeah. "I don't know, man." And he's like, "Who baptized you?" And I was Lucky Strike. And, he's, and immediately his eyes. Lit up. Nah, nah, you cool. Nah. <laughs> yeah, immediately. And then after that, we were cool as hell. But wow, 10 after me. So you, you got down early 1994 then? Uh, no, it was before. Or late 94? Well, I, I didn't receive this until, um, you know, and I got this straight from Bam. Bam Bottle. Yeah, like, Bam gave Oop. me mine too. Yeah. Yeah. But when? So, what? Years later, because he took a while to give me mine too, man. I I yeah. paid the registration, I paid everything, and one day on tour, I remember I was with Alieness, which I just finished interviewing Alieness, and we were talking about that. And one of the things that I realized, Bam is like, "Here, man," and he gives me the ID, and I'm like, confused, <laughs> like I didn't know, I didn't know, like I was supposed to receive an ID. You no, know what I'm saying? I didn't. I, I didn't wind up paying the dues. Um, Bam was like, he knew that I DJed. He knew I was messing with Rocksteady and all that stuff. Ah, and, um, you had so the, used, the, the connection, connection. <laughs> so he was just like, yo, brother, like, you know, here you go. He, was a, he gave me a couple of records. Um, uh, I believe one of them being uh, Planet Rock. Um, and then he gave me an ID and he, he gave me some lessons to go along with it. But I used to be, um, I used to be going to the meetings tagging along you know and so when i found out that they would let me in because i knew wiggles and then like he introduced me to fable and then i i met legs through the zulu um and this was this was going on in bronx river projects like that's wow. when they had it there yeah so, i remember going there now were you going to the classes tuesdays and thursdays or are you um, really attending some of the i'm not sure i used to go to the meetings it was once a month i remember they, they had the once a month joints and so I, I guess you could say per se, I would sneak in there. And it would, I remember like um, my homeboy Nerve would come with me. And so I would show up and then me and him and we would go in there. And then um, they had gotten familiar with us because at first there was some hard fools over there. Like they'd be like, who are you? You know what I mean? And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm, I'm meeting up with, you know, Rocksteady. And like kind of, you know, all right, cool. Like I kind of maneuver my way in because like you get beat up. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, for you sure. Up or you couldn't roll through Bronx River Project. Nah, like, not what? like that. And so, like, what are you here for? I'm like, oh, I'm here for the Zulu like meeting, and I'm, I'm, you know, you throw out a name, is but oh, because back then, Fable was on the council of of the uh, meetings. Yeah. Uh, Wiggles and mm -hmm. Legs, all three of them. Um, Ken Swift, uh, I Ken Swift used to come once in a while. Like he wasn't there all the time, but he was there. You know what I mean? Because uh, he lived a little bit further, but I, I would see Ken Swift, you know, less than, you know, um, mm -hmm. Wiggles and Fable. And I would even see Legs less than Wiggles and Fable, because Wiggles and Fable were like hardcore. They would be there yes. all the time. And so um, I was like, 
I eventually wound up like just hanging with Fable here and there and, and hanging with Wiggles. And uh, I, I remember I wound up chilling with Fable because I, I desperately wanted him to do my black book, right? Mm-hmm. Because Wiggles had hit up my black book. Yes. And so I was like, yo, I want, I want Fable to hit up. So he used to be like, yo, meet me in Manhattan. So I used to hop the train and then we'd be walking around just chilling, like walking around and we'd just be like talking, you know, like so getting all types of knowledge. So that's when, when I met Wiggles, the second I met Wiggles though, you know, and I went to his house, that's the second that I knew that everything was like together. Cause I knew that Wiggles danced. He messed with the mm-hmm. music. He did yeah. graph and he emceed. Everybody had it at like, I remember thinking like him telling me like, he's like, yo dog, like everybody has to have a rap. Like you don't have to be a rapper, but you have to have absolutely. At least, absolutely. That, at least have one verse. And so that like, if somebody says, Oh, you rap, he's like, all right, yeah, I could do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so to this day, I still have that one rap. So that's when everything together was like, this is something. And I was fortunate because, because, I, I met Wiggles, you know what I mean, and realized that because a lot of people, they're like, you know, the, everything's sprinkling in at the time, and they're like, oh, mm-hmm. they're looking at everything. But as soon as I walked to, into his apartment, and he lived in Zuriga at the time, you know, and I walked to his apartment, everything, like, whoa, like, all right, this is hip hop, you know, like, <laughs> you went into a hip hop home, and you're like, yes, that's it. I went, I went to like the. <laughs> the 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 center of the sun almost you know yes like, oh you know Dude, you you opened the pandora's box of hip-hop exactly i was like what and so um uh what was i saying before oh yeah so i, I used to kind of like tag along and go into these meetings and and the first time because i had met legs going to the zulu uh meetings and so i remember one time he he had a fat marker and he put legs on the bench and he was just, I was like, yo, let me catch the tag. Cause he had just came back from Japan and he was like, mm-hmm. ah, I, I, I'll tag your name. Cause he, it was like, it was this fat marker from, from Japan. It was like about that fat. And it was, ah, it was a, okay. Okay. It was a paint marker. I had never seen a paint marker that fat. Cause we used to like roll around with pilots. Yes. You know I mean? mm-hmm. And like, uh, all the other markers and stuff like that. But, um, he was like, I'll catch a tag. Yeah, I want you to ruin the tip. And so he, it was a white marker. He was like, okay, smirk, you know. So I had <laughs> met legs, and 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 he said, what's up, you know? And um, oh, I got it right here. I got to oh, change so- ears. <laughs> I got to change ears. <laughs> yeah, you see, you see, which is, which is, I told you that's what's gonna happen. It did the little. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> um, but first. Coming back, I wasn't breaking or anything like that. All right, hold on, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Okay. So now, now back, what year? What year is that that you could remember? Uh, that was it. Was around ninety ninety one ish. You know, not you know, ninety one when I was doing that. So you I haven't was, even hit Zulu Nation anniversary yet, like the big no, big uh-uh. one and none of My that. My brother had I, just came from one because I remember him going to a, a Zulu party of some sort. Um. And so I was like, oh, shit. Like, that's when he came back with all this gear. And I was like, man, that's dope. But um, I was at the, one of the uh, Zulu meetings. And Legs came out outside. And he was there with Wiggles and Fable. And there was like this rustling. I thought somebody was getting jumped. And I was like, what's going on? I'm like, oh, like, what's going on? And it was like, yo, they opened up a circle. It's like, oh, yeah. And so I remember being next to Wiggles being like, like, all right, if we throw him down, I got your back. You know what I mean? Even though I was the yes, cat. yes, yes. And so he, um, it was like, yo, yo, some, somebody had came. I think it was somebody from Brooklyn. I'm not sure. Okay, carry on. And then I'm still here. Okay. I'm still here. Just, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> yeah. So I think it was somebody from Brooklyn, and they they called out legs, and then it was, it was a b boy, and then and it was a popper, and that guy called out Wiggles, and I was like, oh snap. I was like, oh, and it was this was in the Zulu meeting, and I was like, oh, and Fable was just kind of like laughing. He was like, y'all brothers want some of this? Somebody get a boombox. Everybody was like, oh, get a box, get a box. 
and then Wiggles had a tape on him. You know what I mean? Like with break Of course, of and course, you have like, a tape oh, on him. This was this was the feeling going on, and I was right in the front. I was just like, oh, right. And then so it was like I remember legs being like, "You challenge me." He was like, "You challenge me. You go first. And so homeboy got down, blah blah. blah and then legs went like after he got down, uh, he did the whole like laughing. He was like, "Yeah, yeah." Anyway, hold on, yo, I'm about to get down. Everybody's like, and I remember um that uh when he was getting down he started top rocking he was like yeah you need flavor like this like that and then everybody's like <laughs> he was like i'm about so he was he's doing his thing and then um he did a slow go down and uh, he, everybody's like what 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 and then he started busting off the footwork everybody's like oh just just off of him oh my god and then everybody's like oh and then like the other guy came out of wiggles and like Wiggles got down and like destroyed him, whatever, right? And so um I remember after like two or three rounds, Fable stopped it was like, yo, like you don't realize you got burnt? And everybody's like, ah <laughs> so everybody's just like, ah, whatever. Um, and then like that came to an end. And so I was charged up. I was just like, yo, I was like if somebody stuck adrenaline in, in me, like Yeah, I mean, like, you I got the energy the that you want to battle too, right? Yeah, and I had I had just because Nerve used to go with me all the time to the meeting, but he didn't go with me that time, I think. And so I went by myself. Like I took, you know, I, I trooped it out there. And so I remember seeing that and I I was dude, I was just like or you know, like I came on the block and I was like looking for a box and like my homeboys were like, What are you doing, dog? We found a, an area where they used to throw away like washing machines and we mm -hmm. busted out the cardboard. And so my like my homeboys are just dying laughing because I was like trying to practice, and I, um, every time I got down, they was like, ah! <laughs> I was like, dog, I was like, talk shit now, like, I was like, whatever, dog, I'm I'm gonna get down. So I kept like getting down, getting down, getting down, getting down, and so um, then um, after a while, right, you know, when that when that particular day happened. Mm -hmm. That had to be. I'm trying to. I'm trying to like, put the timeline together, right? That particular day, that was in ninety ninety three, I think. Wow, when so... when legs, got down, and did whatever on the on the floor. It had to be like early late ninety two, early ninety three, and so. The reason why I said that is because I had been practicing for a while. And my brother said it was going to be a rock steady anniversary. And so I was like, yo, I'm going. I don't care what you say. You know, just give me the address. I'm going. And so I went to the 93 anniversary, the 16th anniversary. Mm -hmm. And then that's the first time I got down um, when I was in New York, as far as like in front of people. That was around 93 that I saw Legs and Wiggles battle it out in front of everybody in Zulu because later on that summer, I went to the rock steady anniversary, uh, anniversary, the 16th anniversary. And that's the first time that I actually got down and my homeboys were like, you said you were going to get down. And then homeboys kind of like my homeboy was pushing me and I was just like, oh, and I got down. So I went to the 16th anniversary. I was there with nerve and my boy cease. And, um, it was us three. And then we had kind of like split apart from my brother and my brother had like backstage, like it wasn't backstage per se, but it was like back behind line passes back then. Yeah. Cause it was, it was at the Rocksteady park. And I remember being like, yo, this is so dope because the 16th anniversary, um, artifacts was there That's and they, right. they had just, they were like, they, they were dropping that uh, Passing Me By song, and I used to love that song. And so I was like, yo, that's wow. Artifacts. And uh, my brother was, when we first got there, my brother was like, yo, let me tell you something. He he, he did one of those, like, when you go up to somebody and and they go like this to you, and they're like, yo, let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> and I, and he, he, wanted, he, he goes like this, he goes, yo, let me tell you something. There's going to be people here, like, don't you jock anybody. They put on their pants just like us. 
He's like, I catch oh. you jocking. He goes, I catch you jocking. You, you're not going to be able to come back with me. And I was just like, got you. <laughs> and <from laughs> and it's not. Uh, yeah, go yeah, ahead. Go ahead. My, from, from there on, I was just like, okay. No, like, I never was like that around anybody ever, ever again. I don't like, you know, ah, you know, ever. So I, I didn't even get a chance to be like that. My brother was like, yo, he kind of pulled me over. He was like, yo, I catch you jocking. You ain't ever coming back with me. I was just like, oh, okay, like no doubt. <laughs> now is that the one? What what um the Rocksteady Park is? Maurizio was there. Uh, I don't remember. There was a he... there was a uh, uh in the floor in the concrete they put like a little a little kind of like cardboard and Maurizio's throwing down and maybe a ah uh, yes use... no I I think so because I remember. It'd be mad funny, but I remember Mr. Freeze having like some cutoff shorts. I was like, "Yo, oh, I see that footage." So yeah, I think I, I think that's the same year. Now, will you say is that ninety two or ninety three? That was that, I believe it was ninety three. Uh, the ninety four anniversary one is when it was raining. Yes, Alieness was there, and everybody was going down. Ah, uh, um, I Actually, never attended that. Yeah, go I'm ahead. I'm sorry. I right, let me let me rephrase. Let me go back, okay? Because no, I, Mr. Freeze wasn't into the raining one. Now that I think about it, um, I believe I remember Wiggles having his long hair, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I remember he was dressed in beige with like a Kango hat. Yes, and he was playing with his hair and doing the arm thing, right? Yeah, I remember him doing like that whole. And when he was like, pa, pa, and he yes, was, somebody I had called him out. That. And I so, remember, um, I remember that. Flow Master was there. Um, Kenny was there, obviously. Um, Babel, I'm trying to think. I'm not sure if I knew Honey Rockwell then and there. Because um, Honey Rockwell, um, I went to Lex's birthday party. Mm hmm. No, I went to Lex's birthday party the year after, which was is that rain. the one in the uh, January first, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's the one where, like, the after the rain one was when Honey Rockwell and Rockefeller were trading rounds. That's right. Yes, yes. And then I remember mm -hmm. Honey Rockwell like talking to me after that, where she was just like, she was like, "Yo, you think Rockefeller was coming after me?" She was like, "Cause I wasn't gonna let her go after me." You know, like <laughs> she was like, no, like, you know, F that, you know? And so um it's funny because I I, I when I interviewed her, I showed her that footage and she yeah. still was in denial that, yeah, <laughs> that they were know. battling. I'm like, come on. It's well, very clear that she because was because girls, after me. you know how the vibe used to be. Like somebody yes, man. steps in, another girl is like, Well, I'm gonna get down. Well, I'm gonna get down. That was the vibe back then. And so it was like, um, like, it was more like, don't try to play me. But it wasn't necessarily like a battle. It was, it was yeah, no, kind of like, yeah, it was kind of like that whole, you know, but she, it was like, do you think she was trying to like play me? I was like, I was like, yeah. Um, I said, yeah, I know that she was going after you. However, I don't, I didn't get that vibe because I was trying to be peacemaker, you mm -hmm. know? And so I was like, and we knew Rockefeller. You know, at that time, because I, you know, I had met Quick Step, you know, when he was down with Rocksteady. Yes, you know? yes. And so, um, you know, crazy story, another story, even prior to that. But, um, yeah, because like I, Rockefeller, she used to come through Park Chester too. Like I used to see her every once in a while with Quick Step, and we, you know, mm -hmm. we chop it up when they were around there. Because at the, um, eventually, Wiggles moved to Park Chester. And so he was in Leland, you know. Absolutely. So, yeah, go yeah, ahead. But, Keep going. But uh, yeah, it was that that year because I don't think I was able to go to the after party for that 93 one. Because now, now um, Zulu, when I say Zulu Nation, um, the anniversary that was 94, I clearly remember 
It was huge. It was like an arm. I don't know if it was in Harlem somewhere. I forgot where, but Honey Rock took me there. It, it was, was in Harlem, Harlem right? Yeah, because I, I remember. I had to. I remember. Um, sorry, I, I had. I, uh, at some point, I had to um, leave a little earlier because I was dating this girl back then. You know, um, it was like my first real girlfriend. You know, back then, this uh, um, her name was Jamarty, and uh, I, that's why I used to go to university also a lot. You know. Because mm -hmm. she she lived next to university, like she was, I think she was half Dominican or, or she was all Dominican. Yeah, I thought she was half Dominican and half Puerto Rican, all Dominican. But anyway, um, I used to um, go down there, and so I used to have I used to. I'm sitting here mumbling over myself. I had to leave the Zulu anniversary somewhat early. We got there, we got there early, but we got we we had to leave somewhere after Wu-Tang performed or something like that. Yes, because there were so many artists that night. You remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. And is this the one that... The, and I believe this is where I met you. Yes, that is. Because uh, Cleve was there with us. We were all dressed in Burgundy. Yes, and that's how I met Cleve, which I wanted yes. to talk about Cleve, man. Yes. And I remember you... Like, I remember meeting you a few... Uh, probably before you left because I was standing around and, and and I'm here like exposed this is my first time at a b-boy jam or at an event breaking yeah so imagine how I felt going into that place yeah I remember and that I re place was huge and like oh, the yes look at burn burns was any Big shout out to Burns, man. Burns is fresh. Yeah, Burn one. Shout out to Burn one. <laughs> it's funny because yeah. he was pushing yeah. people out of the way. You remember that? Yeah. Wow, that's me right there. Yeah, you're gonna come out right now. I got footage of you, brother, right here. I know Storm Yo. comes out. I know people will probably want to see this, but um, look, look, look at that shit. Look, look, back up, back up, and look at <laughs> look at Cyclone. Cyclone, remember? Cyclone. Oh, oh, there you go. There you go. This is where you come out. I remember you came out right after this. You look at Kenny. Look at you in the bottom sitting. Yeah. Yeah, the freaking legs. Look at Burn One. Forest. Shout out to Forest. Forest. Shout out to Forest. We used to roll together a lot. Yeah, man. I used to go to his house and Honey Rock was house when they lived yeah. on university. And I know you did too. Look at Honey right there. Honey Shout Rock out to well. Honey. Yes. Yeah. Dude, we, we used to roll together a lot. Me and Honey Rock. Yeah. Well, like Which I'm gonna show you something too that you're gonna probably you probably seen it. I haven't seen it in years. But look, boom. Then who comes out right here? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when was oh, the last time you seen this footage? I've never seen this footage. Look never. At that. Bro. Yeah, you were Ellen. I remember like um. Uh, See now, all the young guys are coming out because they saw somebody young, so like I'm gonna come out too. Yeah, do you know that Cyclone was yes. the first pat first person I battled in the club? Oh snap! What club? It was House Nation. Oh, I remember House Nation. Yeah. So uh, um, anyway, you come out again. You come out again. You can, as in fact, you come out a lot, dude. Like, I remember I, I was so nervous. I was like, there's no way I'm going to come out. Remember that when Storm was killing it? Yeah. Storm was ill. Oh, my God. I, you don't understand. When I went back home, that night I didn't sleep. And I was waking my brother up because he didn't believe me when I told him what I saw that night. He was like, yeah, whatever. But... I think you come yeah. out again right here. Hey, oh, you were already rock steady there, right? Uh, yes, yes, because I I, I got thrown down right before the rock steady. Look at Emilio coming after coming after rock steady. Now, do you already know that Battle Squad was battling rock steady at that moment? Um, I didn't. I thought it was, people were just getting down. You know, I I wasn't sure that um uh I wasn't even really uh, aware that that they were battling i think uh, i'm not sure oh do you see that's to... when Maurizio comes in remember yeah look at that my brother I this remember footage went yeah. around the world and 
let me tell you, there was a few people with a camera. And I believe Fable has footage of this too. That's so crazy. I've never seen this footage. It's crazy. Look at that. And I, I got a funny story about why why uh I never seen this footage. Well, not a crazy uh, story, but you come you come out again, watch way. I wanna put you again. Cause I know that night was crazy. And you usually come out after Honey Rockwell. Look at look at Speedy Legs. Shout Speedy out legs, to Speedy yeah. Legs. I remember uh, a lot of times him and Legs used to go at it. Oh yeah, like, he actually he was going after Legs right there. They used to have them subliminal battles. Yeah, <laughs> yeah yes, yes, yes. Well, you come out again a few times. Maurizio, the homie, man. <laughs> you remember that night, brother? Like how crazy it was. Yes, especially. I honestly. If, um, yeah, go ahead. I've been I've been getting down like pretty much all day, and uh, this part was kind of like the the um, the hype. Yeah, of, this is the the, the ending the almost of everything. Because uh, right. I know Rocksteady used to do that. He's like they'd be doing show part of the show or the, like hosting or whatever. And then they'd right. all come down and make sure they got down. Trying to look for you again. But I know that that night, dude, look at Troll, Street Masters. So this is different, this is different footage right here. Mm -hmm. It is. This is different, different day. This was the year before, I think, wasn't it? No, that's the same year. I just put ah, night vision because so. it got dark. It got so dark, I couldn't see anything. You don't remember this cat? Um, Isn't that... Because um, did you see the background? No, look, on the... look, look, that's you right there again. Yeah. See? And you got yeah. the burgundy, you cleave. I think it was a few of y'all that were dressed the same color. Yeah. Who were you with besides cleave? Because I'm looking at the, at one point I was looking at the background and there was like some sheets, right? Cut across and like whatever. And so um, that was the one that was in Houston. And the one that was in the armory, right? Because I remember some cats came from um, from Europe also, and that was that was up in Harlem. It was two separate ones because I remember. Yes. When when we when I went with legs to the first one, like I drove, like I wound up getting in the car with him, and we drove over there, right? And then the other one was somewhere in Harlem, in a, this big armory, and like. I used to wear that burgundy one, that burgundy sweater a lot, but like I don't know, like because I was wearing the same thing. So because I know at the nation later on, and it's kind of hard to remember, but I remember I was standing in the hallway and Storm was head spinning with a helmet. Yeah. And Speedy Legs was there, Fable. Everyone was like kind of like in that hallway. And Flea mm. Rock was a little kid. Yes, I remember like, Flea. You see, so that's yeah, the same, dark. and I believe that's ninety four. And if it's ninety three, that's crazy because I didn't know I was there in ninety three. I've always thought that my career in breaking started in ninety four, but yeah. I remember that. And then they kind of briefly introduced us. Of course, if you know, I don't look the same from back then. Yeah. I completely look different. So um, I remember meeting you and I remember telling Honey Rockwell because I was rolling with her. She had to ask permission to my family for me to go with her because I wasn't even of age. And That's I remember crazy. she's yeah, she was it, telling me she's like, um, I didn't fact, know that you yeah, I go ahead. That you, yeah, I didn't know that you that you knew Honey Rockwell like that back then. But like I didn't I didn't know like the the because I know that she had a class over on the other side of the Bronx. And, so and I was to, part of that class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was but one I of her students. Yeah, I didn't I didn't know who she rode with back then. I didn't know that one of the people was you. That's yeah, crazy. because I look yeah, I look completely different. And that's why I say you look the same because I still remember. Like, come on, dude. Look, 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 look at your face and, and, and look at look at that face, brother. Like, <laughs> you know how you only got the bandana on, but dude, yeah. that's you. There's not a lot of this. It doesn't look that far from how yeah. you look now. So I remember <laughs> clearly because Cleve was standing there. There was, I believe, two more people with you besides yourself. And y'all were yeah. all in burgundy. 
uh, there was nerve. There was none. And I remember I was mad at none because um, he had blue pants. I was like, yo, I thought I told you black pants, homeboy. He was like, I ain't got, I ain't got black pants. And so I was like, you the only fool out here with burgundy, like, I mean, burgundy and blue. Look like an idiot. And so he was like, yo, dog, like, don't try to play me, son. You know, like, I was like, nah, I felt good. <laughs> but I just remember being tight, like, real tight about it. And so, um, you know, <laughs> but that's my homeboy, none, you know, like. It was all good. Big shout out to none. Two devious. Yes. And, and, yeah. and shout out to Cleve, man, wherever he at. This brother, I've been dying to speak to him because he is the key. Let me tell you, Honey Rock was the one, the one that taught me. I remember yeah. meeting her at Skakey, and I remember used to go to Skakey. Remember Allenton Avenue by the Bronx Zoo? Yes, it was between Allenton and and um and Pelham Parkway on the two and the five that's, line. That's correct. And I remember when I first met her, she was about to tour with Jam on the Groove and she was going to leave to Brazil. And I remember seeing her in, in, in as Keiki. I, I, I was already a little, I kind of knew, I had already windmills because I did martial arts and I used mm -hmm. to see Kung Fu movies and I thought that was throwing kicks and stuff. But mm -hmm. I remember as Keiki, I'm chilling with my boys and I hear people screaming at the corner. Oh, and I'm like, Oh shit, they're fighting. So all my boys ran over there and I ran with them. And then through people's legs, I see something doing this. So I really thought it was two people just like fighting inside that yeah. cipher. So I'm like, oh snap. But then this is what tripped me out. When I'm looking through people's legs, because it was a lot of people, I see legs fly in the air. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what the hell was that? And it was Honey Rock was doing an aerial. Mm -hmm. And then she did an aerial, threw down, and she did a drill. And I was like, what the? I didn't even know how to react to that. So then I'm like, I look and I see Wiggs, Burn One, Ken Swift, Sweepy, and it could be a Desola. Or Doc. You remember Doc Blends? Yes. You know Doc. He's a uh, DJ I, too. Pretty, Doc, Doc. Yeah, yeah, pretty, he locks, yeah. he pops. He's like, mm -hmm. he's he was part of Jam on the Groove. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it could have been one of them too, but I remember I was scared to ask any of the B-boys. like, Because mm -hmm. I thought they were gang members. You know you know how we were dressing? The colors yeah, yeah, yeah. and they had the colors. And I'm there like, I ain't going to ask none of them a question. <laughs> because I don't know what's going to happen. But then I see Honey Rockwell pass right next to me and she smiles at me. So I'm like, oh shit, she smiled at me. So and that means she's approachable. She's approachable. So I immediately yeah. follow her and she's gonna about to get water. And I go, excuse me, excuse me, what you guys are doing? And Honey could tell you that. She's like, oh, um, this is called breaking, b-boy, b-girl, and like, like you want to get down? And I was like, what? She's like, yeah, I'll <laughs> teach you some moves. And I yeah. was like, oh, snap. So she immediately right there next to the water fountain. She's like, here, get down. This is what we call a six step. And I'm like, all right. I went down and she's kind of like teaching me. She's like, and then they started calling her. And then I, and then she was like, yo, yo, here, get my number. She's like, page me. And I got a class here and here. You got to come to my class. And I was like, bet. And then immediately the next week I tell my parents about it and then my parents were like my parents are very conservative at that time so they were like you know military dad he's a cop he's like at that time like just very strict I'm in Dykeman mm -hmm. New York City you know how that goes the yeah, heights yeah. so I'm like I was at the that was at the tip of Manhattan right Dykeman yeah uptown all the way uptown that was it was like where like if you take one step to the left you're in the Bronx yeah you take one step to the and then you're in Manhattan Exactly. <laughs> so that's where I'm at. So then she's like, my mom is like, nope, you ain't going. My dad is like, she's like, ask your dad. I asked my dad, where are you going to go? And she's like, oh, to this practice. Nope, you ain't going. I'm like, come on, like, let me go. Like, I could go. And she's like, nope. Only if the teacher calls and asks for permission. In fact, she needs to pick you up. So I call yeah. honey. Pager, she calls back. She talks to my parents and she, and she picks me up, brother. 
She yeah. takes me to that class and it was history from there. But that's where I said the key was cleave. Why? On the way back, when she drops me off, I go downstairs and I'm walking around and I see this cat. You know how Cleve used to dress? Mm -hmm. He had the, yeah. like the North Face. He had like all these cool colors. And you could tell he smelled like a B-boy for some yeah, reason. He, he, had, I don't, he used to always have incense. incense yes. In <laughs> so he had, he had incense. And this, I remember Cleve dressing. The reason why um, that, that uh, we chose Burgundy is because he looked so fresh in it. Like when we used to roll to, to places. And so we all went and got, we luckily found Burgundy Pumas with the black stripe because they were mad hard to find. Yeah, um, back they then. were. And uh, Cleve always had like an, like fresh outfit, but he dressed down. When, like I, I might've sent the picture to you like, um you know, um, when we were all wearing the same thing, but you know, he, he was like, either had like Adidas or Pumas, you know, mostly Pumas. I which, remember. Which picture is that one? Because I know you sent me a several of them. Is it, is that the one when, is it kind of like a black and white picture or is this, it's, or is, or is that the one that, that, um, there's so many different ones. I believe it's the black and white. Is it this one right here? Tell me if it's this one. Yes, that was at the Zulu anniversary. The I'm one mistaken. that I met you. Yes. Holy. Because like my crap. homeboy right there is wearing blue pants on the sitting down. I remember the guy in the top right. He was standing with you. Because I remember Warren. the beads. He's Who's that? Warren. So. Uh, oh, I never, one, I never met like him, this. but I, I know I saw him there. So the guy doing this is Warren, right? Mm -hmm. And he he started learning from Wiggles a little bit because he he used to roll with me sometimes, and then the guy doing this with the same color, we made sure that they were uh, dressed somewhat the same, that which was gray sweaters, was Roy Boy, and he was introduced. He's to from us. the Heights, Roy, right? Yeah, yep. He had he had jackhammers. Yep, but he was mostly a popper. Boom, boom, boom. And he always dressed fresh with the Pumas. Yeah, and he had braids, right? Braids, long braids. I've, I think eventually he had braids, but he had curly hair, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Because when Cleve was walking to the train station, I guess, I don't know what he was doing, but I remember I went to the bodega and then I see this guy and I, and I like you said, it's funny you say he smells like incense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hitting me right now. Yeah. Because I passed right by him and then I said, and I already, I, I, wait. No, no, I haven't been to Bam's house yet because it made sense later in yeah, the yeah. future when I went to Bam's house, Lucky Strike's house. But yeah. I'm walking and I see this guy and I was like, man, I know this guy got to be a B-boy. So I was like, man, F it. I'm going to run back to him and tap him. And he had headphones on. And I said, excuse me. And dude, guess what? As soon as he takes his headphones off, I hear breaks. In yeah. the headphones, and I'm like, "Do you break?" He and he goes, "Excuse me." I said, "Do you break?" He goes, "Yeah," and I said, "I'm a break dancer too." <laughs> I just started learning, dude. And That's I'm like, funny, "I'm man. a break dancer too, man." Like, 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 yeah, check this out. And I did a gainer. I was already yeah. a tumbler. I did a gainer, yeah. and and I remember Cleve's face. He's like, Ooh. and I said, "Yeah, I man, look, look, look." And I, you know, right in front of him, I wish, man, I need to get in contact with Clee because I never forget that moment. And I'm like, check this out, Flair's in front of him, right there, and he's like, "Do you?" Were, and I you, stop listening to the story, dog. You might have been like two seconds away from being ready to rock, dog. That's the funny crap. That's the funny yeah, crap. And, and I remember you, you coming through. We had a um, a practice initially uh, back in the Bronx at the Starlight yeah. Studio. Because um, that was the studio that was prior to Owen Dolan. And I remember. Yes. Um, I remember Carry guys on. being like, yeah, I remember uh, guys, you showed up to one of the practices and was like, what's going on over here? And I was like, yo, we're about to practice. And then so um, being with the grab heads that I were, they were like pretty like, um, they didn't like outsiders. And they were like, yo, what's up with homeboy? 
And I was like, mm-hmm. well, you know, he breaks and stuff. They were like, yo, like, this is, this is, you know, don't tell him it's the every week thing. You know what I mean? I was like, why not? Yeah. You know? They was like, yo, you could come through this one, but like, yo, like, we ain't trying to have people coming over here who don't know us, you know? Like, because we, I was, I was, I had formed a crew called LSP, and I remember that crew. We we were a close crew at that time, and uh, they didn't want any outsiders at all. You know what I mean? And that, and only the people who who started showing up around, like the people who came through, had to seep in. You yeah. know, what I mean? and eventually, eventually, be like, oh, they're coming through a lot. All right, like, you know, they could do graph. All right, you know, like they could scrap. That was a huge thing. Like, yeah. you could, you have to be able to have hand styles, mm-hmm. and be able to scrap. You know what I mean? And back then, I was, I was chilling with people who were trying to dance, and they were like, nah, 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 nah. Like, I was like, yo, how are you trying to tell me? You know what I mean? Like, and so, um, if they didn't come around to, like, I'd see you every once in a while around our area. And yeah, so, and, and, and Cleve was my connection because. Yeah. Cleve will call me up and he's like, yo, meet me at the train station and we will go to the practice. So yeah. I felt it. The first time I went to that practice, trust me, yeah. I, I, I was already a street kid, a martial artist since a kid. I felt the energy and I'm like, mm, you show me mad love. A-Tone show me mad love. Yes, A-Tone. And shout out to there. A-Tone. Who was the other cat? A-Tone um, and the other cat. Um, it- it was, it he had good hair. Well, oh. besides Jesus, rest in peace. Besides Jesus, mm. it was another guy that I always, I didn't confuse with A Tone. If you could remember, do you there remember was this that? Guy, I, I forgot his name. That he used to chill with A Tone too, and uh, he, um, I, I'd have to call A Tone and, and yeah, I can't remember. And I bet it's the same kid. I know it's yeah. the same kid, but mm-hmm. I remember I invited an eight tone, and I believe you went to this. Do you remember performing uh, in George Washington High School? Yes, a I do. Talent I, show. Yes, and we we battled there. We I think we performed there one time, and then we battled there. Loc versus RTR. Loc RTR. Yeah. Living yes. on concrete versus RTR, and there was no. Now this is something I want you to say because I know. This is early 90s. What yes. other crew were you listening to that was out there besides Ready to Rock and Living on Concrete at that time? Oh, no. I'm sorry. I was about to say nobody. However. Steffings. Um, Steffings. Because when I went to the first club that I went to, like, I saw um, Legs was like, hey, battle that cat. And I was like, okay. And so I, I called out. Um, Little Lightroom. Dave. Little yeah. Dave. And somebody, me and him were battling right and then somebody stepped out on his behalf to 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 you know uh, step that on me and so tony bones uh, right yeah, tony bones was my whole boy but like ah, back then yeah. you know back then Shout out to you know tony I mean? bones like, man yeah he always showed mad love but back then when he stepped out on me as soon as he stepped out on me um a gremlin was there zulu gremlin oh snap and zulu gremlin just stepped out and started doing flares like what what and then like, you know, it was me and, and uh, Zulu Grimm and then somebody else stepped out. And I, I'm i not sure. Uh, did, I think, I think the Flowmaster was there at that time. I'm not sure. But that's when, that same day, prior to that battle, okay, was, and this is, you know, I, I don't like to, uh, you know, this is their business, or whatever. But hey, you say um, how it is. It passed. It's the past. Yeah. People gotta get Passes, over it. Well, that's the day that legs battled Quickstep. He, I guess there was something going on with them. I don't know, but he called out Quickstep. Is that, that the first time that he battled? Because I believe it happened again, or it had to be the first time. But because one day Quickstep is in, they battled. The next day Quickstep was out. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So um, I was there for that, and Legs, like, we got there, and Legs was kind of, like, looking around, you know? I was like, oh, what's happening, you know? Like, he was just like, no, no, no. Like, you just got to handle some business, you know? And so, <laughs> you know how Legs used to be like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was like, okay, uh, sure. And so I was just chilling in this room, and then he sees Quick, and I was like, oh, look, Quick is there. He's just like, yeah, I know. 
And then Quick walks in. And so he calls him out. And Quick was like, yo, why are you bothering me? Like, we boys. And like, I don't, they, you know, they were. Yeah, whatever then, uh, it was. Yeah, whatever it was, like, like blah, 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 blah. And then Quick was like, blah, blah, blah. He was like, all right, blah, 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 blah. All right, fine. And they started like battling. And so it looked, it looked personal. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so it was like, yo, like, Quick and Legs are battling right now, yo, like, you know? So, um, they had their thing going on, and then after that, we, we you know, we went into the other room, and then Legs was like, yo, battle that cat right there. And then so uh, I battled Cyclone, and then that happened, and then Tony Bones. And then we, later on, we, we wound up meeting up, you know, and, and uh, <clears throat> um, I think it was, we used to go to this club called Drums of Space. Oh, I remember it, that spot. Drums of Space, and then eventually became, I don't know if it was the same name, because it switched through to a couple of names. I think it was called The Shelter at one point, and then Vinyl. Uh, uh, vinyl, yeah. Vinyl and Shelter. Um, and then sure they moved I, it. Wait, wait. It started yeah. with Vinyl. Then it Drums of Space was the very first, because I remember because mm -hmm. my homeboy was like, I'm going to get you in. And so- um, Is that a the lot one of like Canal Street, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, I remember that. Because toward the end, it just became vinyl, and, and they're on. Yep. But I, yep, yep. I think that it was called Shelter right before vinyl. That's I, correct. I, That's correct. Or the other way we, around. <laughs> yeah. Or Shelter could have been another club, but I think it was the same club. And then I remember it was Drums of Space at first, and then um, I remember. Yeah, that's crazy. And then we saw. Cyclone out there, and he was just like, "Yeah, well, you know, I'm kind of rolling with, with um, uh, Gump, you know." Yep. Forrest. For I'm um, ro rolling with Forrest Gump and blah, blah blah. And so I was like, "Oh, dope, man!" Like, so from there on, it was just like, like the battling, you know, that the, the between us was like, "Yeah, whatever." You know, Forrest, because me mm -hmm. and Forrest were pretty tight. And so you cool with Forrest, you cool with me, you know. And then like, uh. Tony Bones was like, yo, what's up, dog? Like, I remember you. And there was no love lost at all. Like, he's like, yeah. Oh. It and was, then yep. whenever I went to a, a a rave, we would see them. And it was like all love. Like, yo, what's up, dog? You know, and we yep, get down yep. in the cypher like all night long. And yeah, like, man, clubs back then. Like, I couldn't believe I was getting in them at that time. That's because, the same thing I was saying. And guess what? Tony Bones is the key to the city for me when it came to clubs because this yeah. man had connections and I was young. I was under 18 and this dude is taking me to places 21 and over. He's like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And I'm going in and I'm like experiencing all this crazy thing in, from wetlands yeah. to suit um, vinyl to sound factory limelight. Do you ever go to limelight? Limelight was that it was the church, wasn't it? The church, ah, yeah, dude. I was tripping out in that place. I was like, "What is going on right now?" Uh, I went Webster there with Hall, the Webster Tunnel. Hall, yeah, yeah. Oh man, this thing is like <laughs> one by one, 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 one. But but let's carry on now. Who would you say were your mentors and teachers? If you could drop some names out, that you would really right. say, "Yo, those were my mentors and teachers." Give me one second. One second. Babe, I got your message. <laughs> all right. So, so right. who were your mentors and teachers? Teachers and mentors. Uh, let's see. When it comes to um, teachers and mentors, first one was um, was wigs. It wasn't teaching um, dancing, right? It was mm -hmm. it was wigs, in the fact that like. All the hip hop was all around him, and he he meant he mentored me by giving me his black. Just taking you to places. To well, taking I you mean, to places and he, he he. I didn't really go places with with wiggles. I went more places with legs. However, when when I first got into the hip hop thing, he was giving me his black books, and he was um, rapping around me, and so I he taught me through visual like not like hey this is how you do a letter 
He would give mm -hmm. me the book, right? And I'd open it and I'd look at it and I asked him to do my name. And so like in my black book, and, and so it was him and then it went on to Fable. And then from Fable, um, it went on to Legs. The way that me and Legs met was because I got down in the 93 anniversary, they caught her on videotape. And I, it was kind of like, you know, it was whack, you know? Cause I know you but had then, to battle him to get into Rocksteady, right? Yeah, that was later after I went to the anniversary. But he saw me get down and he was there like, yo, who's that kid? They was like, yo, that's Madcap's brother. And so Legs was like, tell him to come check me. And so I was like, all right. So, um, I mean, they, they were like, all right, cool. So Wiggs came up to me and said, Legs wants to talk to you. And I thought he was going to throw me out of the Zulu oh, meeting. Man. So yeah, I was yeah. avoiding him. And then I went eventually and talked to him. And Legs was like, yo, I heard that you want to learn how to dance. And I was like, yeah. And so I started going through to his house to learn how to dance. And that's when I met Forrest. And that's when I met Burns because uh, he was like, yo, let me see what you got. And I started doing a little something and they were just dying laughing at me. They were like, ah! <laughs> and was yeah, like, funny like, oh, as hell. He was like, stop fucking with him, dog. Like, let's, you know, he brought me out to his balcony, showed me like six step, right? And his showing me six step wasn't like a typical class. It was like, I'm going to show you six step. He did the six step and I was like, I yeah, show me it. one more. He was like, show me one. I said, show, show me one more time. He was like, dog, I'm going to do this one more time. And if you don't get it, you don't got it. And so I was <laughs> like, oh. So I started like, ah, oh, like, let me focus. Let me write something down on a little piece of paper. I wrote something down, like, you know, like visually, like, and then I took that home. And then that's when he started seeing, like, because I came back next week. He was like, yo, this dude is serious. Like, he already got his full work. He got it. Like, let me show you a freeze. And then he was like, you know what? I'm going to give you two things, freeze and swipe. And so I'd go home, and the next week I had them down. Like, it was very quick. Yeah, you, know you I mean? wanted that bad, right? Yeah, I was I was like, Gah! you know? And so within, like, you know, a couple of weeks, I was, I was, I was, I had it, and it was very minimal instruction. But me being around them was a huge part of that, too. Cause then he was like, Definitely. you can come through practice. You can come through, you can start coming through practice. And that's when I started going to Dick Shays. And, and that's when I started getting a little bit more influence through Kenny also, because um, I would see Kenny in the other stuff, you know, like the meetings and stuff. But I started mm -hmm. seeing him in Dick Shays. And then I would be around Honey Rockwell, like Forrest and like Burns more, you know? Yeah. And so I started, I, they would be practicing and I'd be on the side because they were doing it, like Is their, this um, one of the practices spot right here? Yes, that is Vic Shays. Yeah, I, I ended up going there. I I might have I, I might have been there that day. Like Probably. in a corner. I'm telling Probably. you, like in a corner just chilling because they used to do their thing and I used to just like hang out in the corner. Mm -hmm. So a lot of Were you there when the Italian the Italian news came, remember? Mm, it was like an Italian I don't know about, reporter or something. I don't know about the reporters, but I you see like um where legs get or look at forest. Burn yeah, one. Like you know, I could have swore maybe this might have been like, you know, the day that I Easy drove, Rock was there too that day. Yeah, because I, I wound up like uh chopping it up with Easy Rock specifically because I was like, oh shit, it's Easy Rock. Hey, you might get you know down. I mean? Hey, you don't know. You might get down here. Because I haven't seen this footage since the 90s. <laughs> so, yeah. I, 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 I just I know. Yeah. It's funny because Forrest is responsible for, for teaching me back rocks. Yeah. Mr. Freeze was there. I believe he had a camera too. Yeah. Let me, let me go forward. I forgot this cat's name, but he was kind of like a b-boy that was coming back into the scene. Um, I got it. If I watched him get down, I might. I don't know if that was Shaolin Monk or because he's the um, Shaolin Monk used to pop. Yeah, I remember that. You see Easy Rock that day there training. Yes. 
And you notice yeah. that, like more and more people are coming. You see, Maurizio. Yeah. In fact, this is when Maurizio came. I believe that's the first year he came, and I remember he was telling me to record him everywhere. And he actually stood with me at my parents' house, and I remember my parents were tripping because. They see a grown ass man at my crib and I'm mad young. And I'm like, yeah. don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. He's cool. And then, you know, with his accent and they're tripping out, they're like, who the hell is this man? And, yeah. and they didn't know that it was like Maurizio. But um, I remember, and, and Maurizio could say the story like Mr. Freeze right there. Yep. Yeah. Mr. So Freeze is responsible for a lot of these tapes. Yes, absolutely. Look at that. So now I remember Maurizio when he came down and he didn't have a place to stay because he was staying kind of like a hostel or something with a, a group of kids or people. Mm -hmm. And me and him were on a train station and we were going to Long Island to a party because I swear to you, I've never clubbed in my life as much as I clubbed when Maurizio came because he wanted to go everywhere. So yeah. he were going to different. Do you end up going to Bombs Fives? event that he used to do called the spot yes i had yes because like i think it was then, 17th um, street in the city yeah because he he used to um he was trying to be our manager back then our tr manager and that's all oh, really? oh that's, yes that's right which that's a lot how, of people think that bomb five was responsible for rtr i've heard that the rumors for years since yeah. forever i've heard that some say no, that's not true, and some say it is. You can he actually talk name. about it. He gave us the name because when we first met him, like right, he was like, "Yo, B, you know, like you, you guys could be doing stuff." And and back then we were just, you know, LSP, you know. And I was I was attached to Rocksteady, but you know I hadn't started ready to rock, you know. So we were all dancing. So that that was started. All my boys were already dancing. Then Bomb came around and was like, yo, I used to roll with some dudes back in the day. You know, I'd give you the name Ready to Rock. And so we were like, well, right, let me talk to them, see what they think. And so they were like, yo, I don't know. Like, you know, they were really sketchy about taking the name Ready to Rock because it was like, yo, like, we want, we want our own stuff. I was like, well, he's not like our leader. You know what I'm saying? Like, He's giving us the name, like we could use the name. Mm -hmm. So he was like, all right, cool. But turns out, um, you know, he, he's trying to be our, our manager. And so like some, some people stopped breaking because of that, because they weren't really getting too, getting along too well with, with Bomb 5 in, in a sense. But um, we, we all collectively decided to take, the, you know, take the name Ready to Rock. And then we, we went on from there, right? And so he used to like invite us to all all the jams that he used to throw, and and so we were like, "Yo, you're trying to be our manager, but we ain't getting paid." You know what I mean? Like, so as kids, if you a manager, like, where's you know what I mean? Like, like manager gets you paid. That's what the manager. Yeah, does, where's the money? Mean? Where I need to eat too. <laughs> and so like we we would be attached to a lot of his shows, where he was doing graph. And so, um, you know, a lot I of actually people went to a couple the, of shows. I remember um, there was one. Do you remember the one in Jersey called the African Globe Theater or something like that? Hmm. So Bomb Five was responsible. Who was the other guy with Bomb Five? I know that he had connections with a lot of different events. It was a gallery of graffiti. A tone, I remember. And I actually have that footage. It's on VHS. Hopefully I can find it. But I remember that on the flyer, which it tripped me out because I went. Do you remember my boy, B Boy Four? Greg, he was LOC mm. with me. He was actually I, the best one out of all of us. Was, he had math flavor. Was, was, he was. There was one guy that that when I when I first remember meeting you, um, when you came around to the practice, that like he knew Legs' sets. And he would do Elvis, that. Elvis, Elvis, and I, yes. and like he went by, he went by East Smooth, but he was a biter straight up. And I'll say, Yeah, yeah I don't care. He was a biter, was and like... I used to be like, Yo, stop doing that, bro. Even, even he used to take Easy Rock shit too. I used to be like, 
dude, yeah. oh, they're not going to know. I'm like, you can't do that. And that's the reason why I left LOC because there was, well, yeah. besides that's one of the reasons. And I don't care saying yeah. it. Some of them are in, in fact, I was the only dude rocking, going to events, printing out the letters, like making sure like it was a crew. And I wanted to yeah. do it the right way. I was emulating RTR because the only crew that was our age that was yeah. doing it right was RTR. I didn't see Yo, no one else. <laughs> go ahead, saying, go you, ahead. You were two seconds away from being RTR. That's so funny. Yo, um, because like, you know, we all knew the same people. We were all kind of like, ooh, yeah, if you would have been like. In fact, I kind of felt like being down with RTR at a point because I was always with Cleve and Roy. Yeah. And then I started kind of distancing myself from the cats because some dude chose the corner. Some dudes chose other things that I don't yeah. even, I'm not going to even mention. And I'm like, I, I don't, I'm not down with that, man. I'm, I'm hip hop. I, and now I became a Zulu. So they will always yeah. check on, they always check me, checking me. Yo, you can't have those beads here. Yo, you can't dress. Like, I'm like, man, why is all this control? But what I realized, Bomb Five, um, and I remember this was the last time I performed with LOC. And I think I gave up the name after that show. I went to Jersey. And I remember um, I met up with some of the cats from RTR, and it was A-Tone, Jesus. The other guy, man, I can't remember A-Tone's friend, dude. Like, uh, I my bad. If you're watching this show, I'm sorry, man. I apologize. I don't remember your name. But he was, you know who I'm talking about. He was always with A-Tone, dude. Besides yeah, I, Jesus. Would, I wonder. I can't could remember it be the, the dude, uh, it would it started with a P. Damn. Like P or I, something like that. It could be. But I know that um we show up and then when I go up to the spot, this kid Elvis and Greg, and um remember Angel, um, he went by Bo from LOC Bo. Mm -hmm. He had he had a like a messed up arm and he'll break with one arm. It was yeah. Bo. It was Butter I B. I vaguely remember. Remember Butter B, the black kid from the crew? Yes. Yeah. That wasn't he. Um. Uh. With uh, Steppings. No, he was actually LOC. He was. It was a black kid that was. That was. Um. Steppings. No. Well, the black kid you're talking about from Stephine is Ron Low. Oh. Okay. Ron Low. He was like mad they... quick. Okay, that's Butter B, and that's he's that's from LOC, but a lot of people confuse him with, with Ron Love from Stephens because they <laughs> look alike, like face, like if you look at them, they kind of look alike. But Butter B, Angel, that's his real name, Bo, East Move, which is Elvis, and yeah. it was Greg, B Boy 4. He, he was also a graph writer, graph writer yeah. and then myself. And then I remember showing up to Jersey to that event or theater gallery thing. It was called the African something theater. And I remember Aton was outside and he immediately showed me love. He's like, yo, man, how are you out here? And then he goes like, yo, yo, like, I'm not with this, man. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He said, yo, look at the flyer. And I look at the flyer and it says, um, special exhibition battle and it says something like personal is getting personal. I forgot what it said, but then it said in big letters, RTR versus LOC. Mm. And I'm like, what? Like, yeah, my homies, like, I don't want to like battle y'all yeah, like that. Like, oh, yeah. yo, bomb five. And I forgot the other guy's name. So we end up telling them, like, yo, we ain't going to do that, man. Like, we ain't going to. Nah, man, you got to do it. It's on the flyers. People are waiting for it. We're going to see who's the best crew in New York City because there was no other crews. It was LOC, Steffings, and Ro Ready to Rock. Of course, you got yeah. New York City Breakers. You got Rock Steady Crew. But that don't count because that wasn't the generation so for the us. Yeah. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So I remember there, and then we threw down. And after that, I was arguing with the guys in my crew because I wasn't going hard. I I I didn't want to battle a tone. I don't I was like man they didn't care. They were like yo we're the best yo we're better than them blah 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 I didn't feel like that I'm like first of all we got a biter in the crew <laughs> <laughs> that's and, how I felt 
and more, and you know, you mentioned that because that's why that's one of the big reasons why the the crew, because we had a bunch of graph heads, were like, we don't want him, we don't want them biting you your style. You know what I mean? Like, uh, and so they they saw they because they knew how everybody got down. And they were like, ah, it's a little, that's a little biterish. You know what I mean? And so uh, I, it was I way being like, beyond biterish because he emulated yeah, Easy like, Rock, he emulated Crazy Leg, definitely Ken Swift, and I'd be like, yo, man, uh, like that's why it took me so long to get like different moves because. I was already surrounded by everyone and I wanted to look original. Yeah. And you know, Smirk, how difficult it is back then to yes. create a move. Like, yes, to create yeah. a move, that shit was in. Now I leave LOC. I still hear everywhere RTR, RTR, RTR. I'm on my own. Cleve started putting the word in. And I remember, yeah. he's like, yo, don't worry, man. You're going to get down with RTR. And I'm feeling like happy. I'm like, yeah. So then I'm like, yo, I remember on the train, I was like, yo, Cleve, does ready to rock mean ready to rock steady crew? <laughs> I never, I never forget say that to him. He's like, nah, nah, that's not it. And I'm like, I'm just saying because that will be dope. Like ready to rock. It came really close. It came really close to, to, um, having that type of uh, connection because really uh, legs once told me he was like hey you know like you could be like the the induction crew and I told oh, I told my homies snap. about it and um and so they I told my my homeboys and they they weren't down with that they were like nah you know you and like, to like be you your said, own identity yeah like like Aton said he was like nah I'm not I'm not with this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but like I love Ato, um, man. We had we had uh we had those I mean our dudes like you know nerve and all that and there was a reason when I first started learning from legs he said all right come through the crib and I brought nerve with me and he was like nah I'm not trying to have a whole bunch of people know where I live at like just you mm -hmm. so nerve was like nah don't worry about it I'll go back to the block because we didn't live too far away and so um you know there was a dislike for legs ish and it was never said but it was like nah he made me walk home like you know we don't want we don't want to be that you know rock steady however you know um there was that ready to rock had more of a connection with ken swift and i tell you uh, that right now like ken okay, swift like okay. ken, ken swift we he used to come through our practices all the time when we were at the Owen Dolan. And so, um, and I never, I don't think I remember Cleve ever asking me about, you know, if you, if you wanted to put you down that, so like, but, but then again, Cleve wound up kind of like, like one, like he was rolling with us and then like suddenly he was like, where the hell did Cleve go? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, weird. yeah, yeah. He disappeared and I felt sad too because, you know, like whether he was telling y'all or telling someone in RTR, because, yeah, I was so hungry, brother. Like, I was like, I want to be part of something. Plus, uh, it was either the streets was going to eat me, because you already know how crazy it was. Latin Kings, yeah. Nieta, Familia. And then I'm a Zulu, and I'm like, I need my tribe. I need my, my crew, I, I, and I'm all over this. And I remember yeah. talking to Cleve, and then I don't know where he disappears. And I'm like, now I'm on my own. Now so I start feeling the energy that... I guess I can be done with RTR because yeah, like the generation, the kids that were my age that I could like feel like, yeah, I could be down with them because yeah, my I, age. Yeah. It, it might've been, it might've been like, a, a, you know, cause RTR, I mean, RTR, when it came to the, the purity of, of the breaking, yes. But then like there was that influence of graph two where like we, we got Correct. into some trouble. We got into a lot yeah. of trouble, man. I tell no, you. No, and I remember, and, and what what kind of pushed me away then that I was like, now nah, I'm definitely not getting with RTR now. I'm gonna tell yeah. you who's the key to that, Ooh. and I don't care saying it. Crazy legs. Oh, I see. Yeah, I'm just I'm curious. How did that happen? Um, I mentioned something at Hunts Point one time on the side, and he was like, "Nah, man, you're rolling with the wrong crew. You're never gonna be RTR." you got to go through me because you're with these people. 
and I'm look behind me, and I'm like, who are these people? Do you remember Kid Quick? Kid Quick. Um, Power Movie, but Incredible Breakers with Incredible Josh. Yeah, I mean, I, I vaguely He was cross-sided. Remember. He's still cross-sided, but he was cross-sided at that time. Powerhead, yeah, he was guess. super yeah. dope. Well, this is where this is when I started shifting to chilling with yeah. incredible breakers because Crazy Leg gave me that freaking he made me feel some type of way that I'm like, damn, bro. Because I was one of those young kids that here yeah. and there I'll take his class with Ill Will, Hunts Point. You remember Ill Will? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In I do. fact, I remember meeting Abigail. Shout out to Abigail. I met her at Hunts Point in Crazy Leg's practice. And yeah, she wound up coming that, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, she came like mid 90s or whatever. But I remember that I was like, man, now Rock Steady Crew is RD, RTR. Like, ah, it makes sense. I don't want to be part of them. And I felt that way. And then I started training with Incredible Breakers. And then Legs, every time you see me, he'll act like he didn't know me because I guess he had beef with Incredible Breakers. And Chino, Brian, Sammy, back in the 80s, whatever, oh, with I the see. ball busters, and which mm -hmm. that had nothing to do with me, which yeah, yeah, brings yeah. me fast forward to then I see you again. And I'm like, oh, they're RTR. I'm incredible breakers. But I'm on the other side now. And I bring you to yeah. this right here. You remember that right here? Oh, look at that. Incredible Josh versus B-Boy Smirk. I remember that day. I, I, that was the first competition I ever uh, entered. Really? Yep. Because I, I didn't really like uh, going to the point because um, uh, I heard it was competitions. So it that was. was not my thing. That was really not my thing. Dude, look I, my at thing that. was like. Oops. Let me tell you, and I'm gonna pause it right here, real quick. I'm, I'm gonna tell you something real quick. I love my brother, Incredible Josh. But I remember how I felt when you threw down. <laughs> I remember clearly the feeling. That first round, now remember, we're still beginners. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You were in the middle of the illest b-boys in the world. So you already yeah. had you had ammunition for days. You knew how to <laughs> battle, you had character. In fact, I'm gonna remind you something. Do you remember when they call you the pornographic b-boy? <laughs> oh my gosh. Dude, I, I, I remember um, my homeboy saying that, you know what I mean? And I was just like, what, what's going on? I forgot who exactly who said it, but I was like, yo. Yeah. I never forget that. They were like, the pornographic b-boy. And I was yeah. like, it made sense because you did like this thing, you put your your hand through your pants and you freeze oh, on yeah. there. You, yeah, 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 you yeah. remember that? So that. this, this battle, when we were going over there straight up, I didn't even know you were going to battle or anything. So I was like, yeah. yo man, Josh, you're going to win this. There's nobody this to your level. Your power is immaculate. There's nobody that's <laughs> going to touch you. And then I know crazy legs fixed this and I don't care what anyone says out of nowhere. Remember fever one battle Josh too. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. And in, the finals. in this battle, you lost, but you yeah, didn't did. lose. Do you understand <laughs> what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know who was the I, judges, but but I remember standing there, and I'll repeat it again. So you see, move for move. He goes <laughs> out, he does his thing, and I love my yeah. brother, but he, I think he feels the same way too. And you you throwing down, he's doing his little thing, bum bum. <laughs> I'm watching this. I'm watching, and I'm watching this. Studying him a little, little, little. This gets up, and then my man <laughs> B-boy Smirk comes out, and I, I was like, "Holy shit! What the hell is that?" And then boom, I, I was like, "Oh my god!" I was like, "Shit! I think you're in trouble, brother." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then look, like, he came in, power move right away. Because he knew yeah. he knew you were not gonna do power moves like him. Yeah. <laughs> and then like uh poop. The funny and thing I, is that it, no nobody knew I had power back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, you did. I knew you had but they didn't like I didn't know you were gonna spin as fast as him because you remember his his reputation in power moves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. So so you haven't seen this since? 
I this this uh, battle I've seen maybe like once or twice, and I I, I just remember thinking um, at the end of this battle, I was like um, that nobody yeah, yeah. like nobody in in the b boy scene really liked me at that time. That that's how I felt. Really? I like, well, like well, you know, I had those people that I said what's up to, you know, yeah. but I was like, I didn't, I don't, I don't remember thinking like. Like I got burned, you know what I mean? I just remember but being like. But you did it because I, I I remember the feeling like he fell there. You were catching all your freezes. You were like, like it it was. It, you just looked like you were already more experienced than him. Like look at your style, bro. Like like I was like I was standing there and I I, I felt like digging a hole and hiding because I, especially when you did that shit, I'm like, what the <laughs> hell? Yeah, yeah, straight up. I don't know who was just, judging. But you won that shit, and then I remember that Josh ended up doing the finals with Fever yeah. One. Yeah, and that I, was I, like a ten-hour battle because Glegs didn't want to let go of it. I'm like, yo, yeah. it's three rounds, so like, why you keep? <laughs> 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 That's so yeah. crazy. I had to, I had to bring you back, brother. I had to bring you back I, to that time. I went I went to that that uh, to the point that day, and because I you know I used to go there for like the um, the ciphers and stuff. And I actually surprised Legs that I entered in a competition because I went there and I was like, you know what? I never did a cup. I never, never done a competition. And so I was yeah. like, you know what? I'm a joint. And so Legs was like, what? Like he was kind of hyped up that I joined the competition because, you know, he wasn't like, go ahead, join the competition, join the competition, join the, you know, he wasn't like pushing me to do that. And so um, it, it was competition was kind of a new thing, you know, like, yeah. If if you were around in those days, right, um, at all, you know you knew that my style of dancing was completely different than what you just saw right there. Because on the real, like I didn't do competitions. It, it was more of like a th- th- like that was more like the stiffer side of me. Like my co- my co- competitions were always stiff, and like the ciphering was where I was like, you know, I would get down, you know. Battle well, you were born in the cipher as a b boy, you know that. Yeah, you were born in the so, cipher as a b boy, and 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 doing shows that, too. Not only that, but like the big thing was I used to hang out with Burns, you know, and, and Burns used to be like, "Yo, these dudes with the camera, you know, they trying to yep. steal your shit." Like, blah, blah. yeah. So <laughs> whenever I see somebody in the camera with a circle, I used to be like, "Go to another circle," or like avoid them, and so I kind of like. In a way, I I appreciate it, but in a way, I, I, I feel the same way. I feel like you. I I should have been in front of that camera just to like document, yes, mark my my. And, and we weren't and thinking of why, that. We that's why. That's why. That. Like, yeah. That's why. Like people would be like, "Oh, I never heard of this guy Smirk." I'm like, I'm like, okay, you know, like uh, I'm from back in the days. It's like, oh, you are, yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, and, 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 and I have the same issue. It's very rare that you see footage of me because I I see a camera, I run the other way because of that same thing. Burn that was one, mentality. Burn, burn one, one of my mentors, of course, Forrest. Remember, it was always Forrest and Burn one together. Yeah. And Forrest what? lived in the Heights. But, but yeah, man, Burn one and Forrest, Forrest lived in the Heights, and I used to ca- get up with him. And to this day, Forrest tells me that every time I'll see him, I'll call him out because I wanted I wanted to learn it so bad. And, and I'll tell yeah. you, Forrest, every time I see you, I'm gonna call you out. And, and every time Bomb Five will do that sh- that um event, the spot, every yeah. time I'll go after Forrest just to mess with him. But it was just love. I just wanted to learn. But I know we're getting close, and there's so much we had to cover. But remember, Smirk, we can do a part two to this in the future. And, and I want to yeah. share this so much, like just to show you a little clip of one of the memories that I remember watching you. That's you and Honey Rockwa. <laughs> I can tell you that's back in the days because of the jacket. Uh, yeah, when was the last time you saw that, dude? I it's one. These are one of those clips that I, I never see. Like, I don't know where where you come across this footage from. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, man, me and you need They to don't talk. call me flashback <laughs> for no reason, my brother. I gave yeah. you flashbacks right away. But let me ask you a question. We're going to skip a lot, but it's all good. If you could be remembered for one thing, what would it be, my brother? 
<clears throat> Man, that's that's a loaded question right there. Um, you know what? Uh, being in, being inspiring somebody, you know, what I mean, like if there was one thing that 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 um, I I wish that I could be remembered for to you know maybe being an inspiration to them, you know, like whether it be graph, whether it be dancing, you know, or DJing. It's like, dude, like when I first started or like blah, 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 you know, this this person kind of like uh, was there, was that person, you know what I mean? So that that was, that, that's a pretty big deal for me, I guess, you know? So let's and, say um, 50 years pass and they mention, and, and of course we might not even be here anymore, but what is something that like your kids or your kids could kind of be like, Oh, you know, my great grandfather was the greatest or did this. What what would, would that be? And it doesn't have to be on some hip hop tip. It could be life. Yeah. Well, if it was my kids, I'd read, you know, just the fact that it, it, you know, I strive to be a good father and be like, Hey, I, I hope that I would be a good father, you know? Um, and family just you know the love you know in general like if when they think about me they think of love that's my family that's where i'd want that to be like you know when I think that's about a great it, answer that's a great yeah. answer love basically they know he was all about love and and, and giving and and, and 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 it's true, man. Because since I've known you, man, you've always been a you've always been a peaceful dude. You've always been like those type of cats that always show love, humble. I never felt no animosity from you. I never felt like you were feeling like you were better than anyone. You might feel a little bit that way because you were probably next to Burn One <laughs> or, yeah. or next to one of these cats that are telling you, yeah, "Yo, yeah, yo, yeah. don't be smiling too much." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah man, and, I know and- I. Yeah, go ahead, go yeah. ahead. No, I was just like, hey, back in the days, you know, like, you you had to have a chip on your shoulder, at, you know, a little bit, you know what I mean, back in the days. But uh, absolutely, you know, like, absolutely, I was able to kind of like smoothen it out, you know, so that people would, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like getting, I, I like getting along with people, you know what I'm saying, and to, you know, be at each other's throat, more or less, is kind of negative i i like to just keep keep things moving you know what i mean and like dude i i honestly felt like we just scratched the surface like <laughs> i'm like yeah dude, this we gotta is, do yeah, we, you... did, we gotta do this again for sure no because, no we like, will we will we will because there's so much so many questions and things i have ready for you but i i i what's it called i i just let it ride because i want to i want to be genuine with this show i don't want to be a robot yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I want to be a robot. Be like, all right, next question. Nah, I want to be. Yeah. We're having a great especially, conversation. In memory with lane. You, because because we were there at the same time, and so if it was like being that that um that uh what's the word I'm looking for? If you were just interviewing and blah blah, blah and you know, and you hadn't experienced it, it'd be like, yeah, okay. So my next question is. Yeah, but which like, I just seen an it. interview that you had recently, and yeah, <laughs> it's not the okay. same thing. You already know my brother. Well, no, 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 I know for sure. But I mean, big shout out to my uh, the homie Mikey Ice. You know, like, you know, uh, he wanted to, to reach into a little bit of um, you know, the background and see what people weren't necessarily talking about, and he was there too, like during like that '93 era. And so um, he was more or less uh, exposing um, at the time um, on the West Coast was yes, um, was uh, the cats out there. Um, yeah, like uh, Ivan and all of them. Ivan and and all of them. Yeah. So like I'm I'm having a brain fart because I was like I just had to dip into this side of the. Uh, I know, I know, I know years. how it goes. I know like, how uh, it goes, my brother. Style elements. That's what it was. Yeah. So yes, he, yes. Yeah, he was. So he, me and him had even a conversation outside of the interview where, you know, we talked about a lot of stuff and, and um, he gave me a lot of perspective from like the West Coast, you know, during that time. And so he's an interesting brother and like, um, 
actually, I think that that would be a, a nice connection for you guys to even like mess around and yes, kind of, yes, like, and, and, like and a, it's gonna come, it's gonna come. Yes, yeah. definitely. The from the west to the east, you know what I'm saying, or from the east to yeah. the west, however you yeah, want to yeah. call it. But I know you gotta go. I know you got places to be, a family yeah. to take care of, and I'm so proud of you, my brother. We know each other for so so long, man, and yeah, and, and you know how it is. People just go their separate ways, not not out of hate or anything, but it's just life takes you in different paths. But we're always still here, and I know you're still breaking. I know you're yes, still doing your yes, thing. You know it. Like, like <laughs> people, people can't sleep on you. Like, if somebody come up in your face, you already know what you're about to do. And, and, and yeah. you're not, you're not 20 years old anymore. We're in our 40s. So, yeah. So, cats I mean, gotta come correct because you got a lot of experience. You don't gotta the, do the that way, much. The way I do it, right, is that like if I'm going to a jam that nobody's really gonna know me because they haven't seen me in a while, whatever the case is, I haven't been in the scene. I usually go with the black hoodie and I roll with my, you know, my hat down, a Yankee yep. style and I get down and if, and I, I tend to see what the response is naturally and not going there rocking colors, not saying I was this, not saying I was that. I yes, get down yes. and like people will usually come up to me like, yo, who are you? <laughs> like, who are you? And I'm like, Oh, I'm smart. oh I heard a smirk. Like, but I, I want them. I want them to come at me. But it's easy to, yeah. yes, it's easy to confuse smirk with smurf. Pretty easy to yeah. confuse it. Yeah. My, big you shout out to say? smurf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Shout out to smurf. I would love to interview the brother. He has an amazing show too. And, yeah. and, and I wish him the best. And hopefully I get this brother on here too. But uh, again, man, it's always a pleasure. And please let's do this again because it's so much. Yeah footage that you have not seen that i Dude. took from my vhs that i recorded myself that you're gonna be like where do you get this from and i'm gonna be like i recorded it or someone got it for me that nobody knows about because i have friends yeah. that are spectators that were never b-boys but they were very very uh, big yeah. fans of of the culture but this is what yeah. i'm gonna do i'm gonna put you on your own screen and i'm gonna yeah. ask you what are you up to these days where can people find you online and connect with you, whether they want to learn rocking, breaking, everything that you teach, everything, some graffiti, which I didn't even showcase your graffiti. And, and boom, let me show you a little bit. Look at that right there, my brother. So dope. So freaking fresh. But I'm going to show more on the next show. But go All ahead. Right. Take it away, my brother. All right. Uh, my, my wife is pressing me right now, but. Um, see, what am I up to these days? I, I work, I work in the airport, um, an air traffic controller, but, um, I'm t teaching over, uh, in the studio ballroom of Reno. Um, yeah, whoever wants to go and learn stuff, um, be boring, whatever the case is. And if there's anything that you want to learn from me in general, you could always hit me up on Instagram, B boy smirk. And so, um, yeah, it's one of those things where I'm doing uh, an abbreviated quick because, you know, my schedule, you know, doesn't allow me to continue talking. So Yes, um, it's all good. We'll do it again. All right, brother, man. Yes, Ooh. brother. So, so check it out. This is Flash Talks History worth listening to. That's a B-Boy smirk there. An iconic B-Boy from the early 90s. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening or watching. We're out of here, man. I'm going to hit you up. You already know. Thank you, brother. Peace out. All right. Cool. Peace. Yeah.